everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to the stream so today the live stream is actually sponsored by ea so i had this big idea about the stream and what i wanted to do in terms of some of the sponsor content opportunities that ea gave us you guys have been asking and i'm sorry the background's gonna lag for just a second i'm uh, just tweeting out posting in the discord that we're live and everything but today's a, like a, a really really unique day in terms of what we're going to be giving back to the community on it's something you guys have been asking for and feedback and i thought you know what this is this is how we're going to do it this is this is going to be the best way we're going to do it it makes me really really excited because well i mean hey i get to try to give back to you guys as much as possible so one second um <clears throat> let me just load in here and i'm gonna explain what's going to go on for today actually yesterday i hit masters too i hit masters yesterday doom 92 diabetic bear cracked king of avenging Gabriel, Nikki, what's going on? Dragons, great to see you. So today, this is this is how this, this, the, the stream is actually going to work for today. Uh, I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit. And don't worry, we won't have it all in the background all the time. Just enough to kind of get the vibe going. Okay, so today's format, what we're going to do, I have somebody already in the Discord, and you probably already saw me at everyone in the Discord about doing a live coaching session today. And you guys have asked so much, wanting me to coach you guys. And I I don't know how to charge for coaching sessions. I, I'm not very good at it because I just like to like to help people. And so I, I thought, okay, well, technically I'm, I'm assigned to do EA sponsored videos, but what if I turn this into a full video and live stream and give back to you guys, literally free coaching session live. So you guys always have this from your Hey, what's up, Rems? It's good to see you. So you always have this at your disposal. So you can see what happens when we go through a coaching session to identify what your weaknesses are, your strengths are, how to push past through plateaus. And we're going to do it live with, with somebody I've never met before from the Discord. And we're going to, let's bring some people in. If this goes for two hours, it goes for two hours. If it goes for four, it goes for four. But I, I really, really wanted to, uh, and we're going to do London Aid, like the name, and shoot him an invite. And I'm going to hop in Discord with him right now. Um, I'm going to be using the Discord, uh, the, the Daz one, and we're going to hop in and we're going to we're gonna work through everything. I'm really, really excited because this is, hey, I mean, if this format really works, I mean, this is this could be something really huge. Honestly, this could be really something really huge in terms of just giving back. So then, because, you know, coaching sessions are technically private, but if people are willing to share their knowledge, then we all grow and improve together, right? All right, so I'm going to hop in Discord with him. Um, introduce him to stream. We're going to bring more people in chat as well. I'll be in a secret voice channel and I'll bring peeps in. Um, and yeah, well, let's just have a really good time. Let me bring him up. Hey, London Aid, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Not too much. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for uh, volunteering in front of uh, peeps in terms of this, uh, this stream. So this is actually a sponsored by EA Stream. And we're going to be doing a live coaching session with you. I know people always like charge for these coaching coaching sessions, but I've been doing a lot of them recently and some of them have been, some people have paid, but I don't really ask for payment. And I thought, you know what, why not just do it live to, if I just give it, give it away and then have like people see the process and really improve. That's really my uh, thought process behind it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm super excited, so. People found uh, him really helpful. Shake off the nerves first. <laughs> oh, you're good. Trust me. Trust me. It, uh, don't even stress. If you dumpster me and one mag me, awesome. If you don't, then uh, that that just means we all have something to improve upon. That's that's the fun okay. part about all this. Like there is there's no there's no losing. Everything is only a win and only a dub. So what you're gonna grab is an R99 okay. and a wingman. You're gonna deck it out completely. So I'm gonna grab myself a wingman gotcha. here. Let's go grab that. Put yourself the, the best mag and your favorite sight on the weapon. Okay. Daz, do you have tips to play Bloodhound? I actually have been playing him a lot. Uh, sorry, they I've been playing them a lot because of... Uh, I, thought you, I don't know why I thought you said a different legend. I've been playing Watson. I've been playing her. And Bloodhound, I've been playing them a lot in, uh, in ranked. So yeah, I have a full video guide on Bloodhound and what they bring to the table. Bloodhound is really, really strong in Apex. Really, really strong. You can't beat essentially free wall hacks. You know, it's it's really strong. So also, uh, London Aid, if you don't find this helpful, uh, even if there's things along the way, like your feedback is is important. You know, like I, I value people who come by, even if you're in the stream, 
giving feedback, thoughts, questions that you guys have while we're coaching and we're working through this. That's what this is all about. This is all about how we all get better um, no matter what. And the question is if Daz is going to pull any punches. So not to, not to scare you, London Aid, but whenever I do coaching, I don't pull punches. Um, this is okay. my thought process behind it. So know that I'm always going to be coming at you at 100%, 110%, if, if not even more. And the, right. and, and the reason why, this is, this is what I've always wished would happen to me especially whenever I was growing up or also even improving in gaming and that if somebody is better than you, let's, let's say you had the opportunity to play against uh, shroud or um, skadoodle or any pro player. I don't know. Just listing a bunch of just names. It would be amazing to one V one against them and identify where you're weak and what you need to improve upon. And I would bat bang my head against the wall for 10, 24 hours, if not a whole week straight. And no matter what, at some point you're going to win. At some point in this 1v1, you either just beat me out right now because I haven't even warmed up, or you will find ways to improve. We're going to talk about it. So what we're going to do first um, is that we're actually going to do just 1v1s, just all out. Whatever weapon you want to start with, just we're going to do three rounds together, and I'm just going to identify what type of player you are and your weaknesses. So okay. we're, I'll count it down, and uh, we'll get started. Um, let me get catch up with chat. Say EA to improve their cheat system. It sucks in ranked. Why Apex team don't have any big decisions? I don't do anti-cheat, but I do not agree with any cheaters. So I do coaching. Is why I try to improve. Do you know any tiny gaming mouse smaller than a Viper Mini? Oh my God. Uh, there is one, but it's like crowdfunded essentially. Okay. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to switch this. Ready? Three, two, yep. one, go. <laughs> Ooh, I need to wake up myself. Oh, Alright, nice. let's go again. Down. Switch legends. We got two more. <clears throat> Thank you again, London Aid, for, for hopping in. You're, I, I hope you learn a lot from this. This is going to be a lot of fun. Ready? Yeah, me too. I'm excited. Three, two, one, go. Nice, very nice. Okay, one more. Um, you just need to up the quality on uh, YouTube. You got to go to settings and change it. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. All right. Nice. Okay. Three three rounds in. Now, I've uh, there. There's two things I want to ask questions about. Just right off the rip. Yeah. You you were either playing on a lower sensitivity or you're on controller. Which one? Uh, lower sensitivity. Okay. Uh, 800 DPI 1.1. Okay. Let me do the math and see what that sense actually goes to. Also already warmed up. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> was it 1.1 800 DPI? Yep. So you're at 18.5 inches per 360. Okay. So what I have, uh, it, who's your main? I, I want to say it's probably an aggressive legend, isn't it? Uh, Wraith and Pathfinder. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're used to mobility and everything. All right. So the interesting part that I found th there's different things that I do whenever I start just to identify what your strengths and weaknesses are. When you can predict mm -hmm. where I'm at, you really excel like you're you're landing your shots when i start to add mobility and start to throw you off that's why i was like you're either in control or you're in a low sense it's whenever you start to struggle a bit more with your shots and with your aim when you can when you can guess where i'm at actually out of the people that i've coached initially you actually have a really great game sense and know exactly really what you're doing um i would say you're probably mm, don't don't take offense i'm just trying to figure out what your ranking would be either high diamond or but not minimum plat but at least high diamond at least if not masters 
<laughs> I appreciate that a lot. I'm trying to push for Masters next season. I've uh, gotten Diamond twice now, but I stop at Diamond 4 because I don't like to try and push it. Okay, that makes sense. So this is this is the thing that, especially for everybody in chat, this is really important to really... Uh, to really highlight is that a lot of players are actually a lot better than they give themselves credit for. And you ask somebody else a question, thoughts on Fuse. So the thoughts that I have on Fuse is that he's actually a, a better legend than most people give him credit for. The problem is, is just uh, finding a good team to balance at him out. If you, Cause Fuse has got to play aggro. And if you have a team that plays defensively, he doesn't really succeed. He's great in arenas and he could definitely be used in competitive and I've seen it happen before. Okay. So the reason why, um, it, you honestly could easily get masters at your skill level. The, the the thing is that most people get intimidated by, especially whenever you do a lot of coaching like this, is that, and we're gonna do some 1v1s over here because I know what your sense is, and I'm, I wanna kinda push that. How many hours, you aim train, I can tell. How many hours have you practiced? Uh, so I just started fairly recently. Uh, Hollow actually turned me onto it. Uh, so I joined the Voltaic Discord and all that stuff. So okay. I've been doing it for like three weeks now. Pretty nice, con nice. Very consistently. Okay, um, I, I would say the only thing that you need to work on if I, if I were to use um, any practice of scenarios is really to, to combat movement. If somebody really contests you, you're really strong. So there's a few things I want to identify to see. And then we'll honestly, we'll probably go into a game and I want to see your decision making. But I just, I'm just trying to get a, a feel for you as a player to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. So okay. what we're going to do, um, I want you to climb up on the box and I want you to 1v1 me just like straight up right when we hop up here. And you're pretty warm. I'm still wearing up myself. So yep. we're just going to go right into it. Ready? Uh, jump down and then we're going to uh, crawl okay. up. Got you. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Yeah, as I figured, your your aim is pretty strong, man. It's pretty, really, really good. So let's move over <laughs> here. You. We're gonna go over here. We go here. I want to see what happens if I add a little bit of range to you. Okay. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so you have like a you have like a sweet spot range of where you really excel at. I would say um, if somebody is doing a lot of movement around you, that's where you're going to be thrown off, and your sweet spot range, you're actually better close range, which is uh, like I, I would say like right around here. And this the reason why you're you're better at this close range is because this is where aim training really feels like it, it, like if you zoom in right now, you would feel that this is where like you're like doing your your target switching tracking and everything but if i space out just a little bit like to the to the range before this is where you start to feel uncomfortable when targets are really small um so let's let's do this one a little bit more and i would say the biggest thing you need to work on based on my first assessment based on your gameplay is either tracking really large movement like really broad movement like just so you get your full 360 and be able to like to spin around or you're going to struggle with micro movement stuff that's really small you're you're really nice in the sweet spot range but you you're gonna struggle if somebody moves dramatically or if somebody is uh is like really small so we're gonna do this again and i want you to climb up and we're gonna 1v1 again and ready yep three two one go i'm taking shots let's spin my gun got the toilet Yeah, Darn, it's nice. it, it's this range that you struggle with, but you have really strong aim. Like, so whenever you look at Hollow's playlist, especially when it comes to aim training, and this is this is mm -hmm. applicable by the way to a controller. It's crazy because your aim close range, like based on what you're you're beaming up here, is about the same as if a controller player would aim, which is really really strong um, at this engagement, which is good because also controller players, if you get too close, really struggle. Like if you're right in the face here. Let me try one more scenario with here, you here. This way. Okay. I'm going to wide swing out at you. I'm already going to give you a heads up. I'm going to fly right here, and I want to okay. see how you do with uh, with a strafe the minute I come out, okay? Okay. Okay, ready? Stay where I'm at. Yep, and I'm going to wide swing. Yep. I'm giving you a heads up because I want to see how you react to the flick. Yep. Knowing that I'm coming, and the reason I'm, why I'm doing this is just to explain. You know that I'm coming at this angle, and I want to see how you react to the track. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go.
Good. Uh, I should have just switched. Enemy. It's fine. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Oh, I don't mean to be Pathfinder. All right, switch here. Does Hollow? He has an aim lab playlist. Uh, yeah, it's about thirty minutes. It's a really, really intense playlist, by the way. It's a really good one. All also, right, can I uh, can sure. I say everything you've said so far? Just you're spot on with it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I I spent a lot of time in this game, and I've I don't know. I I love this kind of stuff. Like this is why I'm doing this stream because like I I love this stuff. You have no idea. This is like this is so organic for me to do just because it's fun to do. It's addicting. I, I, I spend so much time practicing and training just for fun, and, and I try to just share what I do with others. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, I'm going to white swing again. Three, two, yep. one, go. Okay. So what's really going to help, we're going to do this exercise again. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run around like a maniac around you, and I want you to use, use wingman only, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. This, this this time. Uh, just because I, I want to see how you do with precision. Like, I know your tracking in terms of doing broad movement is a little bit um, difficult. I wish he had Kovacs, but he may be sponsored. Right now, he's sponsored by AimLab. How do I get a coaching session? I can bring some people in live from chat. I'm going to be doing this for a while. Um, and they're all everyone has been a part of the Discord as well. Um, I literally just added everyone in the Discord, and I was like, first come, first serve. Who wants to hop in for a live coaching session? So... Uh, London Aid literally is part of the community, so th that's why I'm, I'm doing this stuff. Okay, so wingman only. I want to see how you handle flicking to a target that is all over the place. I know that tracking is something that you're going to work on, but I want to see how you do with the flicking portion. Okay, ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay, not bad though, not bad. Um, gosh, I can give you a playlist on like scenarios, whether whatever platform you prefer. Um, in terms I'm of a Kovacs user, gotcha. And we can we can uh, I'll, I'll find you like a list of things to work on. Um, in terms of like you just need broader movement and you need to go extremely small in your movement. So it's because your sensitivity it is low. And uh, what's your? Do you have a big mouse pad? Uh, yeah, I've got the biggest one I could find. Okay, yeah. perfect. So you have the space. Um, and that, that just comes with confidence. Believe it or not, you'll be able to flick and do a lot more than you realize. Um, and so I'm going to switch to Horizon. I'm going to try to even throw you off a little bit more to really push you on this as well. Okay. All right, really? ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay, I was definitely trying to just move as much as possible, throw you off. It'll come in time um, in terms of like getting used to that like broader movement. That's the biggest thing. And my, my movement isn't even perfect right now. Like I'm kind of wall bouncing off this and getting it right sometimes. But that's just how it goes in game too. So that you'll definitely, f that movement that you're feeling is what you will need to get used to in time. So you can use more speed scenarios to speed yourself up. Large, broad movement. And then yeah. trust whenever you have your crosshair center, not to over flick. So as an, on a lower sense, the problem that you run into a lot is that you'll find whenever you're trying to do small movements that you have to do like a large movement when somebody's far away. Um, here's an example. Uh, let, let's do let's do this other exercise that'll probably help you as well to kind of push this plateau. Let's go grab a. Fl uh, what's your, what's your, what's your, which one do you prefer, R three one or flatline? Flatline. All right, we're going to grab flat lines at distance. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to test to see how your – grab a, a hollow or a um, HCOG, whichever one you prefer. I don't know if you prefer hollow or HCOG, either one. Get a gold mag. Okay. I just need a test to see just so I can confirm whether I'm right or wrong in this. Are you going to do these more often because I cannot play this evening? I might actually. I mean, if it gets really well received – 
like I'm identifying right now for Londonade what he needs to work on and what his weaknesses are just by me. And it doesn't matter if I do well against him or not. It's a matter of trying to pinpoint his weaknesses and what they are so he knows what to improve upon. Um, because then once he ties this all together and he wins in these engagements, when we go in game, I'm going to do a round with Londonade as well. And I want him to pretty much play either passively as aggressively as possible whenever we land so, we're, so people can really improve. So what we're going to do, um, you got a flat line, right? All right, so start here, and you're going to start by uh, swinging on the left side, on my end. Side. Yeah, yeah, start here. I'm, I'm going to be really, oh, okay. really far away. Got you. And this will kind of help steady your aim. Whenever any anybody, by the way, whether you're in controller or mouse and keyboard, you have to realize that the movement required to control the recoil is less than you think. So I'm going to wide swing you just to give an example. So go ahead and peek out. Yep. Uh, this side. Oh, my, wait, my bad. My no, you're bad you're good. Side. You're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah. you're going to swing however way you want and just keep wide peeking me. And I want to see how you handle the recoil control. You said that the flatline is your more preferred weapon. One of two things are going to happen. You're going to absolutely be me. I'm going to be like, okay, that's what it, that's the same movement that you need right here. Whenever you're right here, you need to replicate that movement. Or two, you're going to miss a lot of your shots and you're going to realize how much you're overflicking. Well, there's only oh. two. There's only two ways that this goes. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh, I didn't even see you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a trick, okay? Uh, for everybody who's watching when it comes to recoil control at a distance. And I, I guarantee... What you're doing is that you're over flicking. You're over flicking. So what I want you to do now, and um, I can tell you that you're over flicking. Um, you're 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 going to apply the same thought process, and we're going to go to the other training session that we just did a second ago, and you're going to be like, oh wow, so that's what I need to do, and it's going to help yeah. immensely. Um, grab yourself a longbow. Just use the irons on it, and I want you just to steady your aim and just hit me. I've actually done this with Sarah recently, and it's helped her immensely as well. Essentially, Any attachments are just plain. Uh, put yourself a uh, a gold mag on it. Yep. And I I come the thing is that when it, when I come up with these exercises and think about them, it's mostly to help somebody else improve. They're all specific, to, and this is how you push yourself to become better at at Apex. It's like, okay, what am I struggling with? Let me put myself in extreme situation to train. All right, so are you back over here? I got a hooligan over here. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. That way. Okay, so. Whenever you have, I want you to pay close attention to this. One of two things are going to happen whenever you fight me here. You're going to land all your shots because you're at a lower sensitivity or you're going to continue to overflick and miss. And we're going to keep doing it. And at one point, if you can't land your shots on me, and I hope that you, you, you may or may not, depends. Either way, it's, it's still a dub. We're still learning. And this is like, this is going to be huge. And I, I, I hope to God after we're done with this, you go in game and you're like, Oh, and then you have like a moment, like a euph euphoria moment where it kind of clicks. And then when you're doing aim training, you'll know what to work on specifically. So we're going to wide swing again, and I want you to try to land as many shots as possible, and then we're going to break down what happened, okay? Yep. Three, two, one, go. All right, so two things are gonna happen here. All right, so I wanna break down exactly what happened and why why you're struggling here. So one, it's really hard to see targets that are far away in Apex Legends, right? Now, whenever you're aim training, whether you're on controller, mouse, and keyboard, it really is irrelevant at this point. You need your crosshair to disappear on the target. If, if you no longer can see me, but you know I'm there underneath the crosshair, then you know you can land your shots. You don't have to be a hundred percent accurate so if you're going to come out now around the corner I this way put your crosshair over me you'll notice like half, right. of, half of my body just disappears right yep know that whenever you do that that you're going to land your shot whenever you're aim training i almost would encourage you to like let's say like one wall six targets or it's like six shot ultimate in aim lab whenever you take a shot you want your target to be like cover over the target so you're used to what it feels like in apex legends even if you're controlled the same thing happens if you hover your cursor over and I disappear, most people, what they try to do is they try to hover their crosshair around the target so they can see them 
that's a natural human thing because you need to see the target to be able to shoot it. But realistically, when you're shooting an apex, the more the target is gone behind the crosshair, the more likely you are to land your shot. So if you can't see my face and you can see it and everybody in chat can see this as well is, I mean, a race body is gone. It's not there. Like there is no wraith body. That's when you know you're going to be able to land your shots. Now, the same thing happens with recoil control. It needs to move less than you think. So let's do this again. And we're going to wide swing. And all I'm going to do is just move around. I'm going to strafe left and right. And you can start actually whenever you want now. And I want you to get used to how small the movement is on trying to hit me. So I'm going to start shooting at me. Just go for it. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. There you go. You notice as you keep doing it, you're getting more and more accurate with it, right? It gets, mm -hmm. it gets easier and easier as you keep doing it. Like, if you were just aim training and practicing, that could just keep going. Just go for a minute and keep rolling. Mm -hmm. I promise you, but, like, as you keep doing this, it's like, oh, that's so easy. Like, because once you connect, and this is the, the thing that happens with most players, once you get your first connection with the shot, it gets easier from there. Like, you won't even have to think about it. And don't rush your shot either. Take your time and wait. And most people rush their shots whenever they're in game two. If you wait for a second and feel it out, this is how you learn. This is how you get better at Apex, is by trial and error and just doing this over and over again until it clicks. And then down. boom, at some point, inevitably, you're going to eliminate your target. Now I'm gonna put the pressure back and then we're gonna switch to the flat line. And I want you to get used to that recoil control at a distance, okay? Okay. And then afterwards, we're going to switch back to the R99, and I want you to spray me down again, knowing how small that movement control is. All right, ready? Let's okay. wide swing out. Three, two, one, go. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. Look how much more accurate you were after like five minutes, dude. Just want to point that out. Because you get used to the movement, right? Like once somebody's there mm -hmm. to kind of point it out. Like this this is the problem that most people have without coaching is that they're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get better. It's like, you, you know why everyone struggles with this? Because everyone's trying to overthink it. Everyone's okay. like almost overthinking every scenario of how, like, why can't I do it? What can I do? You have to take everything down to its most simplistic form in terms of just shooting something that's really, really small and building that base. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, you have your flatline still by chance? Yep, yep. Okay, I'm gonna stand still and I want you to shoot me with the with the uh, flatline, with that same premise that we just talked about just now, okay? okay? So go, I'm not even gonna move, just go in and like, just spray me down. Shot at. <laughs> uh, I can hit two bullets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine, don't worry. It's actually harder to hit as, target that's standing still than letting the bullets just randomly shoot around. Okay, so do the same thing. Try not, the recoil with the flatline, and this is important to for everybody in chat as well. When you're controlling recoil, everyone knows the flatline initially kicks over to the right, so you need to pull left to counteract it. The most important, okay. yeah, I will, uh, Cossack, I will definitely do a Mad Maggie guide, 100% will be put in the channel. So what you need to work on in terms of improving your recoil control is knowing at least what the pattern does at the very start. And our yeah. R three hundred one kicks up over to the to the right. The flat line kicks over to the left. So knowing that initial pull is going to help you, but try to only make it very small. And somebody's talking about recoil smoothing. That's pretty much just flicking faster than the recoil pattern. That's literally all it is. You got to you got to beat the recoil pattern. Um, essentially by by small micro movements jitter aiming uh recoil smoothing you can go to just keep firing at me while i'm talking it, okay it would keep practicing go for it all the, all that recoil control comes by oh by beating the recoil challenge essentially if you can outpace the recoil and keep resetting it, like if you're playing valent or csgo the same thing you can do jitter aiming you can do um recoil smoothing in those games too but first shot accuracy matters way more in those games than trying to control a spray pattern going to keep shooting at me so the only way to beat to, to, I guess you could say nerf of jitter aiming or, or recoil smoothing would essentially be to nerf how fast you can move with your mouse. But then that would be like, I don't know what you would call it. It's like a mouse smoothing. So like you try to move fast, but then it limits how fast you can actually move, you know? That should be getting a bit easier. So we're going to wide swing on this. All right, ready? 
and I'm gonna shoot back this time, and I'm gonna add a little bit of a, uh, of, of a strafe. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Better, better, better. I know that's a lot of pressure in terms of being shot at because you got to keep in mind, and most people don't know this, is that whenever you get somebody flush, that is the perfect time for you to push and make an engagement. The reason why is that they're going to have aim punch. So aim punch whenever you are shot. Uh, you know what aim punch is, right, London Aid? Yep. Literally, whenever you're flush, your recoil patterns is going to go all over the place and be way harder to control because of it. How do we join the queue for coaching? Um, I'm just bringing random peeps in from chat. Um, I think I, I've already, I literally started with the Discord chat. I'm not going to be able to fit everyone in within the time slot, but I'm going to do my best to try to get as many people into the stream as possible. Okay. This time I'm just going to stray from front of you and you're just going to try to shoot me as much as possible. Okay. Yep. Ready? Three, two, one, go. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. Okay. So, so I'm going to stop you right there because I already identified something that, that you need. Don't try to flick to where I'm going. Just mm -hmm. keep the crosshair where you believe they're going to be going in the center. Does that make sense? E kind of, yeah. So don't, like if you see me moving to the left and right, instead of trying to track the full left and right movement, try to hold just in the center of where you think I'm going to go. There's going to be recoil pattern flicking to the left and right. Right, and you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to line up that recoil pattern 100%. But if you keep your crosshair right towards more of the center, you're going to land more consistent shots. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to grab an R99 and we're going to do the other exercise. And I want you to apply that same thought process. What's up, Black Belt? It's good to see you. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Getting shot at. Better. You see? You see how you land a lot more there at the end? It's good. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Taking shots. Just gets so hard to see once you get going. I know. And the, the thing is that once you're doing it, you just have to. It's like it's a leap of faith. And for everybody in chat, it's literally a leap of faith when you're controlling that recoil. Is that if you can't see them, I'm going to show you from my point of view what it looks like again. And we're going to white swing out. And then we're going to do the R99s. To, R99s run this exercise this afterwards. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So chat, like we said, keeping it center, it's a leap of faith in terms of where you believe that they're going to be at and what they're going to do. Whether he's standing still, moving, it doesn't matter. It's 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 just a leap of faith. If you can't see them in your crosshair, but you know that they're going to be there, you take the shot. Why cap at 209? I have a 360 hertz monitor and just 209 feels nice, especially when I'm streaming. Uh, yes, Coxic. I answered that question earlier. Ready? Three, two... Oh, I'm not up there. I was grabbing an R9. My bad. Oh, yeah. Let's, okay, let's do the R9 now. Because the same principle is going to apply. Okay. So hopefully, from what you're already seeing, and we're going to go in game, and then we're going to figure out where your decision making. Because you can work on all these things mechanically, but at the end of the day, you also need to make good decisions while you're in game. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's piecing all that together and ask yourself what happened in this encounter. And sometimes in the encounter, they are just unwinnable. And some things in the encounter, you're like, I could have just ran. I could have. I didn't have to repeak that. I could have popped a healing uh, item here. There's so many different little nuanced things that you can do to improve. So now that we're up close, That's you're going to be able to see a lot better, and you're going to control the R99 recoil pattern. Try to do the same thing that you did in terms of making that small movement, but apply it here. I know okay. that it doesn't seem like it would be because they're moving much faster in front of you, but as long as you keep things in center, because when people strafe, they, no matter how hard people try to think by varying their strafe, they move in predictable ways. Like even if I'm strafing like this, I'm, I'm like if you're in a gunfight and shooting, your mm -hmm. brain automatically forces you to like go into a pattern, like a rhythm, you know? And it's really hard to break the rhythm and start doing things differently. And that's kind of what separates more of a casual from a pro is whenever they're able to throw different techniques and throw off their opponent. But realistically, okay. even pros fall into the, the same scapegoat of just constantly being moving left and right in the same movement pattern. And because of that, you know that your recoil control can be held mostly in the center to beat them out. TF4, what's up, man? It's good to see you. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, 
One, go. I know the aim punch kicks up at the end. But did you notice from your first spray that was already much better? It should feel much better, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just already noticed from your last time climbing up that you were landing way more shots. So let's do it again. Yep. Three, two, one, go. I'm taking shots. I'm not going to shoot back this time. So, yeah, don't try to flex. Try to hold it towards in the center. Towards the center. Of where you believe that instead of like trying to chase me, mm -hmm. because the recoil is going to kick a little bit to the left and right, don't go for the head. Yeah. Let, let the recoil do the work for you, essentially. Okay, ready? Yep. And this time I'm going to move around. I'm going to shoot back again. Three, yep. two, one, go. Better. Oh. So the biggest thing that you have to that you have to build, and mm -hmm. you can, you can do it in aim training and all you want, but once you're in game, there's going to be so much on your screen that's going to distract you because aim training has a nice stellar or a, a, a clean environment, if you will. Right? You have to trust through all the visual clutter and all the crap that's on your screen that keeping your crossers in the center, like do you still like just by seeing me in the center that I'm going mm -hmm. to be there, that I'm not disappearing or going anywhere else. That's that's what you mm -hmm. have to trust. And I'm not going light on you, by the way, and I'm doing that purposely so you feel that pressure. When you go in game, if you are used to this pressure, it's going to be much easier in game, I promise you. Most people always get thrown off, all the million things that, that happen in game. Let's go again. And let's do a round together, and then I'll bring somebody else in from chat. Okay. All right, ready? Three, yep. two, one, go. Much better, dude. By the way, I an enemy. like I said, I'm I'm not going light on you. Like I I don't I don't like I'm not gonna what's the word I guess lack for a better word BS. <laughs> like I I'm tr I'm trying to land as many shots into you as possible, but it helps. You know, it, it a lot of Apex is building up that uh, that tension, that build up, the uh, the stress, the I guess everything compiles together whenever you're trying to shoot, right? And if I mm -hmm. just let you have it for free, then you won't ever understand how to deal with that pressure. And people all the time come in chat and they ask the question, how do you deal with pressure in 1v1s and Apex Legends? You just got to get into the clutter of it. You have to get into the mix of it. You have to build the confidence by doing this over and over again. If we kept doing this again for another 30 minutes, you already made improvements. So let's go back again. Let's, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do our 1v1s like we did at the start. Uh, let's grab our wingmans. Okay. And then we're going to 1v1 again. And then we're going to hop in game. We're going to talk about decision making. Because then the unfortunate part is you can be mechanically strong, but then you have to reset completely all over. Okay. Let's do like three 1v1s around here. And it's, it's hard to, uh, again, try to like go from 0 to 100 in these little training sessions. The, the whole idea behind it is to open your eyes to what you can potentially work on and what your weaknesses are and everything. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, yep. two, one, go. Nice song. Oh, you flexed on me there. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that movement in there. You're, are, you're also, I wanna point out, really good at hugging the box. So whenever I take height mm -hmm. from you, uh, kudos to you. Most people actually struggle with this, but most people make a mistake of wide swinging. Uh, so I didn't even have to coach you on that. So you already kind of knew to make sure you hug angles and cover. Whenever you full ego and you full contest, you're pretty much saying, I know I can win this fight. And you're just yep. going to full on ego it. All right, so ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. I'm taking nice. Good stuff, dude. Way better. Thank you. It's only been 30 minutes and you're already it. making progress. I love it. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go. Oh, darn. Enemy down. That's where the low sense is going to get you. 
but mm -hmm. it will come in time especially when you're dealing with somebody who's just running around like a maniac and trying to sweat but in game you'll have to worry about it less so the key takeaways that i would recommend for you if you can there's a lot of aim training exercises to work on full 360 movement in terms of like being able to build up speed and it's it's going to take a lot of uh of engaging your arm a lot more and it's going to probably tire you out so try not to overdo it on the big exercise in terms of like, let's say i'm going to do 360 360 360 right you're going to have to find that balance or adjust your sensitivity to what feels more comfortable because you need to be able to track if somebody jumps around you and get comfortable the plus side is that once you know where they're at you do feel comfortable the other thing that you need to work on is those long range distances because in ranked especially at the high level it's not about the close quarters engagements like the ones that were like oh i'm gonna wall bounce i'm gonna flex and do all kinds of crazy movement around you you know it's it's really going to be more or less about trying to get your uh your damage in from a distance so you can actually make an impact you know so like you you'll see this happen at the high level but the difference is that you'll most likely be dealing with more or less this. If I were back here and the zone was closing, you would see more or less this fighting at this range, or if not even a little further back, to get some shots in, right? Okay. So let's hop in game. Let's do a round together. Um, I want to see what you do in terms of decision making. Okay. We'll do duos. Okay, cool. Um, uh. You can play Wraith. I will play... I don't know who I'm going to play, because I'll play Watson for the memes. <laughs> is that a contract? Where's the contract? I don't even know. What's the contract? Watch all your videos, guys. Never caught you live. Well, it's great to have you here, Ian. It's great to have you. We're doing a live coaching session right now. I'm going to bring somebody else again from chat. I'm just going to kind of do it at random. And we're, we're having a vibe. We're having a great time just trying to help the community as much as possible. Again, this is all the stuff that helps you improve and grow over time. You know, it's... Uh, it's hard to just kind of nail it all down in like 30 minutes. But once, you know, especially with London Aid, now he knows over the course of the next couple of weeks to work on. And then as he grows, it'll be a whole new onslaught of things that to, to improve upon. It's just, it's a never ending thing. It's why I love Apex Legends because the skill ceiling is just super high. It just never ends. Let's go find them all. Do you like Storm Point? I do. I think it's a great map. I'm fine with it. I think people are only just getting frustrated and tired with it because it's been out for a long time. And so they're missing the variety. Uh, want me to help drag it in out of voice chat? No, I got it. It's okay. Because I'm going to have a lot of downtime in between. Appreciate you though, Urban. No worries, Tactical. I'm hoping that, um, that people will look back at the VOD and it helps people. That is my plan. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not perfect either. Trust me. There's... A million things I need to work on myself. All right, we're going to drop semi-hot. I got to pause my music, though, that I have in the background. All right, let's go. When you're dropping chat, the biggest thing is to already know what the loot pattern looks like. And if you don't know the map, you're just going to have to drop as many different places and get used to what the loot table is. Because you always know there's always going to be... Wow, there's no team. There's one team here. Okay. I'm going to go bottom floor. Okay, I'm going to go here, then. And making sure you're not splitting loot. You want to get as much loot as possible. And, yeah, things are going to happen where you get landed on and you're gonna have to just pretty much fight your way out but you always know where loot is going to be so within a few minutes of dropping you should be ready to fight most buildings even if the guns are absolute doo-doo water um are going to have you're gonna have something to fight with essentially like i already have guns to fight with i got a hemlock and i got a bow check i'm ready to fight so one guy's already in the center over here and you can pretty much fight it Let's see what this guy's doing oh hey bloodhound Careful, there's two of them down there. Alright, one's flush. Moving up. Crack the Gibby. Or nice. Almost cracked him. Moving in on the bubble. Oh, I hit the Devo. Might die. You got it. Nice, good job. Good. Alright, and the plus side. And I want to kudos to London Aid is that's why I was able to tell that he was a diamond player is I'm going to put out a video on this as well is that good quick effective comms are really really important especially when you're making a push and a play so that's really really important to to highlight 
And London A was very quick in terms of beginning his gun, so I don't even need to coach him in terms of just doing that either. Because he was already over. So, like, if when we were done with that fight, they need you need to be that fast with your loot to be able to get into an engagement. And because the beautiful system that Apex has in terms of the MMR, you're always going to be sweating as a, as a good player. That's the really frustrating part. <laughs> you don't ever really get a break with this MMR system. It's just constant. Like, they were just as fast and rotating in as possible. So you can do one of two things in this scenario. Um, is you can continue looting really, really quick at the remaining part of the area. If you're lowly, you throw down your ult. Um, then you're pretty much in and out, and you are pretty much good to go. If you don't get the ideal guns, it's pretty much tough luck because you need to rotate to the next area because loot tables, the way they work, have prefixed amount of guns and weaponry. So if you don't find a gun in this area, I guarantee you're going to find it in over in the next one. So at this point, oh my god, a winger doodle. Take that. Love that gun. And, uh, okay, you got a flatline. All right, let's go. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. I'm running too heavy. Are you running heavy? Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm running about checking wingman. Let's go. All right, cool. And then you rotate and then you just go. How how to do comms? I'd be pinging. Pinging is fine. Sometimes the pinging is just as good as because you're not cluttering voice, you know? I think someone was shooting yeah, we're here. a marksman weapon in here. Yeah. I'm whiffing. I'm going to push. I'm just going right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to fence off the uh, door. So there's two teams in here. We can wait for them to make a mistake. I am going to open up the door and just start taking shots. I have no, no idea which one's rush. which. Yeah. Yep. Dropping my ult down. 45, purple on the right. Okay. Uh, 19 blue. Left. 100 and got him down. All right, I'm going to top off, then I'll push in. Okay. Once you're in the scenario, you have the advantage. You can pretty much go aggro and push in. So if you got the numbers game and you're topped off and you know they're in shambles, then you just go for the push and you go for the play. Thank you. All right, you ain't that for Oh, me. you're good. <laughs> Long as they're dead. I need to get rid of this uh, this gun though. I do need heavy. Okay, I'm dropping 60 for you right here. Oh, and thank you're you. good to go. And London Aid and I have never played together, by the way. So, you know, it. whenever you're playing with somebody that's brand new, it's re if you understand the basis of, of comms when you're playing with somebody, then it becomes easier just for whoever you're going to be playing with. Because it's like everyone has the, the spoken rule together. That guy had no energy, and I don't want to run the bow check right now. That's unfortunate. Oh, there we go. There's all the energy in the world. I'm topping off, then I'm going to fight. Okay, got you. Okay, I'm peeking on the right. One so far. Yep, going left. Uh, I think he went down zip. Okay. Let's go push him out. So if you have height, that's always the most strategic point that you can have. The plus side of Battle Watson is I can fence this up. We could drop down. Now there's two th ways that this plays out. We drop down and there's uh, they're sitting here waiting for us and then we die. Or we catch them out. But it looks like they ran. Over here, they ran. We can we can chase. Yeah, this is the first time I was actually able to catch a stream. I'm usually at work or school. <laughs> you're good. Also, yeah, be sure you reload your guns, Chad. I dropped down without even reloading. Don't worry, it's already reloaded. I'm good. So most people always struggle. Okay, what do I do once I'm done rotating? Well, try to predict where the action is going to be. If we fought during all, all around the wall. They're not going to be high point. They're most likely not going to be north pad. They could be cascades. It could be antenna because those are usually hot spots. And then if it's in zone, then they're more likely to be there. So you kind of go based on where zone is pulling and where positioning is ideal. That's pretty much what you're going to do from there. That's why I mentioned Londonade. It could easily be a master's player. Easily. He just needs uh, the time and the right squad behind him. And then boom, he'll, he'll hit master's. It's just it's just a time sink once you're trying to hit mashers or pred. Okay, there they are. So that's where our next fight is going to be. And if you have the resources to fight, you know, if you got batteries, that's the fastest way you're going to be able to reset. And then you just keep going in engagements. And if you struggle at an engagement range, that's whenever we were talking about the coaching session earlier, where it really breaks down like, okay, why couldn't I land my shots at that range? Was it my gun choice? Like, what happened here? They're in mid. Yep. Yeah. yeah, one right here. I see him. 
Nading him out. Working my way in. I did a horrible nade. I'm gonna arc start properly this time. On the side. Putting the gen down. Got to pop a bat. Any damage? It damage? Uh, barely. Uh, okay. Like one shot. I'll push with you though. I'm gonna go this side. What the heck? He's over here. Well, poor guy. He was oblivious. So one thing that'll help with your comms, especially when you're trying to hit masters, is knowing even if you did damage, letting him know if he did damage or not, so that I know what I'm light swinging against. Helps immensely. So yeah, he caught me off guard, so I was just no, it's okay. Spraying. It it happens. Uh, once you nail down comms and they happen organically, especially for uh, for chat. Um, hold on. Second floor. Okay. Shoot. I'm gonna climb up. Okay. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good for now. Okay. He may come down on me. He's on the left side. Flanking. That's uh, twenty on one. 150. Got him. I'm resetting. Uh, oh, he's on me. I'm gonna die. Oh, it's the second squad. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, that's a good try. Good try. Uh, second bad. squad. There we go again. <laughs> so, what okay. I, What will help, especially when you're in a fight, you don't need to overcome it. And I started overcoming it just there just to give an example. But if you're dishing out a crap ton of damage or no damage, it's important to know, like, what the situation is. And, and like, we had mentioned, there are situations where you just won't know what's going on right but if you come to say i'm resetting i'm batting i'm pulling back i'm pushing in uh 50 damage wraith purple okay well that's great information because then you know that the person has 150 hp left and either you have 150 hp and you know that you might be able to contest it or maybe you have a red armor and they have you know 150 hp left and you can 100 percent win that engagement even if you were to whiff some of your shots right mm-hmm why do you have little white meds compared to your amount of cells? Because you assume that you're not going to get cracked. If you get cracked and take that mass amount of damage, it means that you did something wrong or you're playing too long outside of zone. Um, I, I only run one stack of white meds and max I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring in like a med kit and everything. So we're gonna land close to the action here. FaZe, it's great to have you here. We're doing a live coaching session. So if any, anybody's hopping in, we're doing a live coaching session. We're doing it with viewers. Uh, London Aid is a awesome new person I just met, and uh, we've been killing it. So we've got a team here, potentially two. And like I mentioned before, the biggest thing that you need to do is know where loot is. You drop, and you should be able to fight within 30 seconds, quite literally, if not even faster if there's already a team here. So if I got guns and I got a triple take, I should be able to fight in anything no matter what. There will never be an excuse of not being able to fight. Maybe you don't feel comfortable in that loadout, and if you don't, that's going to be called to just practice with different weapons. You can literally clutch out with a Mozambique. Like, Mozambique actually slaps, dude. It's such a good gun. All right, I'm ready to fight. Me too. Right, let's go in. And the reason why you want to fight, there's two different benefits to fighting early on. Um, one, if you're doing ranked, early KP. Two, you might be able to third party an enemy team. Three, you're going to level up your Evo armor and get more effective... Uh, uh, damage out. Was okay, nice. Good comms. Watching left. 36 on blood in the middle. 69 top, Ash. Crack Bloodhound. Okay, nice. Four flesh. Got Ash down, pushing. In middle, Bloodhound. Got him, nice. Good stuff. Alright, we got a Lobo nearby. Reset quick. And realistically, you either win your ones or you lose your ones. There's just pretty much it. They're jacking everything. We need to go push them. Yep. And you're going to get all of your there. loot and everything you need off of other people. Yep, one on the right. Shoot. I got fried. I need a bat. Right. It's all you. Uh, I'm backing up. Okay, I'm going to back up further then. If they push, they push. It's fine. I'm blocking the other door. Hey, they arced my door. Okay. See if I have time for this Phoenix. I don't know if I have time. Two seconds. Shoot. Uh, one in mid, one over there. Yeah, I shouldn't pop the Phoenix. That's my bad. Is 
Oh, she's using my skin. She's better. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Nice> try. <laughs> GG's. All right, we'll do one more. This okay, is why I love so Apex. Good. I love this stuff, dude. Good comms, by the way. I shouldn't have. Um, I shouldn't have just Phoenix. I should just covered for you. That's my bad. But you see, this is this is how you learn. This is this is the stuff of why does it matter what level you are. Like I played master. I played competitively, and I'm sitting there trying to get greedy with a Phoenix kit. You know, so it's just one of those things that you just constantly are always learning. And if I'm resetting, you know, does it mean you you hold? Like, what what could we have done different there? Well, landing more shots would have been ideal, or just full backing and resetting even further so I can get the get the Phoenix off. Or I cover for him longer. So there's a lot of different things. I would actually put that on, onto me for um, for just trying to get greedy with the Phoenix kit. So even as, as you're coaching, this is this is why I love coaching because it's like I'm not always going to be perfect either, and that's always also a good moment to say what was the strength and weakness there. I always panic when I'm in a gunfight. Any suggestions to fix that? You need to get into more engagements, more fights. You need to fight more. The problem with Apex Legends is that you're going to find yourself not in as many fights in the BR if you play passively. You have to have to assume that you're going to lose. It's better to lose and get into like 10 or 10 fights than it is to win and only fight one team. You know, it's not it's not about winning. It's about trying to get into as many fights and improve as much as possible. How to find the prediction error issue? I haven't run into that issue. And you get better aim. We've been talking about it. We've been coaching about it. Um, I have it way earlier in the stream, and we're going to reset, and we're going to coach somebody new in just a moment. We're spending about, like, I guess you could say, like, a, an hour with everybody. So, we're working on it. All right, we got uh, multiple teams here. I'm going to land on these bins here. I got a team on me. Yeah, yeah. you got three guys. Oh, two teams on me. I didn't get any weapons, so let's just rotate out. Yeah, Unless there's something um, in these bins. You. I got a PK. Okay, nice. We might be able to stay in fight. I got a P2020. I can drop you an Eva. Okay. And there's 16 as well. Thank you. Hold down here. Hold down here for a minute. Okay. Wait for the other team to push up. Or those guys are going to push down to make a mistake. One of the two are going to happen. Wait for a second though. Okay. Man, that guy's got a fully charged sentinel already. Jesus. They're going to fight in a second. The other team's pushing. Okay. Oh. Oh, I ego swung it. You're good. Above you. Oh, wow. Uh, I got nice shot. Try. That's my bad. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. We're just in the thick of it in the middle, so it's fine. It's expected. All right, we go again. Okay. But yeah, um, instead of wide swinging because you don't know the information, you hold and then you pull back and then you jump above them instead. That guy had a crazy sentinel shot, so kudos to that guy. I have an idea. What if you do a coaching stream every Sunday so it's like a weekly thing? Do you agree? I mean, I'm down. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, that guy had a fully charged sentinel just blasting me. It's crazy. Playing on high ping tips. Ping, playing at high ping can be a disadvantage and an advantage. Sometimes lagging actually makes it way harder for the other person than it is. How to stable your frame rates, dropping all your graphic settings as much as possible. Alright, this will be the last one. Okay. Like I said, I find this stuff addicting. I just can't stop playing. <laughs> once, I, <laughs> once I keep going, I just want to keep playing. And it's okay to, like, like, that situation, you're only going to learn by literally being in it. You know? Like, how, how would you know not to wide swing that arc and, not, and just pull back towards me instead? Like, if that, then that guy had an arc and he wide swung. He's a, he's in a 2v1 situation, you know? Even if I have a P2020 and you have a, an, a, a PK, he's going to lose, you know? St statistically, like, it's impossible for him to win. Even if we both whiff our shots by 50%, that will still mean the amount of damage dished out is most likely going to kill him. But you only learn that by playing aggressively. And by playing aggressively, you're going to just get better. Okay, I'm pretty much ready to fight. Got a wingman and a rampage. Okay. Are they fighting in the building? Yeah. All right, let's go. Here, one on the right, I think. Killed one. Nice. Crack Gibby. Okay, pushing in. 
45 on arm shield. Selling. Another big tip, guys, when you're trying to reset and you're fighting, hold and reset until you know you have information on the, on the next target. You don't need to run out and just act like a maniac. You'll notice that it feels like people are playing super aggressive. Okay. Fuse identified himself. Taking height. Yeah, I'm gonna pop a cell. I don't see him. There he is. It's a different team altogether. I'm riding them. Yep. I got scanned by blood. And there's a crypto. And we got a crypto. He's gonna come. There's it back here. Up tight, up hot height. 45 on him. 47. Back in, back in, back in. I'll open the door for you. I thought you were gonna queue, my bad. No, you're good, you're good. Alright, so we got like three different teams around us. We're just gonna wait for a weak spot and then we're gonna push out. Patching myself up. Let me look for the Bloodhound team in a second and we're gonna look left. Need to yep. Oh my gosh. We're literally are Run stuck between a lot of teams. What's your ult at? Uh, 50. Okay. All right. Hold height. We got two pushing up. Okay. Crack Bloodhound dead. 45. Jump on her. Jump on her. I'm dropping on her. Uh, flash 19. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna cut her off up here, upstairs. Good. Got her out the door. Oh. Oh wow. All right. Got her. <laughs> nice. Now we're reset. <laughs> I panicked. It's okay. <laughs> GG's, GG's. Yo, Double Derp, what's going on, man? All right. So that... Oh, I think other team, other team. Someone's coming, yep. Yeah. Here they come, they're coming to the door. Grab a swap. They're underneath. Oh, hello. Push out, push Cracked. out on the kid. He's ISO. Shoot. Cracked Good door home. All right, I'm jumping down then. Got him. All right, reset down below. He's here. Flush. Good job. So one thing to identify, and this is just for chat, is to identify who's by themselves. It's important to know who's by themselves because then you got a 2v1. So if you're getting shoved in a building and they're split like they are at the stairs, that's, that screams for you. Okay, I'm going to go shove this guy and go push this guy. That makes a difference between a good player versus a not good player knowing, okay, this guy is outside by himself. Go shove him because we're going to beat him, you know? Do you react to personal Discord messages? I try when I get time. I don't always have it all the time in the world, but I but I try. Do you have any tips of solo queuing to masters? Patience, lots and lots of patience to try to mitigate as many early fights and losses as humanly possible. You got to deal with a lot of RNG. It's actually, honestly, sometimes it's a little easier to do on solo queuing. Any tips for not getting third partied all the time? Rotate out. Go into a fight, hunker down, and rotate out, and go back in. Duck and weave as if it was boxing. Like, if it feels like you're boxing going in and out, then, you know, sure. Do you play stretch? I used to. I'm back at, I've am i been back at 1080 for a while. You know, ALGS, uh, a long time ago. I do more shout casting now for official tournaments. So, you can't really compete and cast a tournament at the same time. Uh, about Colts. I don't know where they're going. Uh, level three light mag here. Extended light mag here. I'm running too heavy. Oh. Oh, here they, they go. Just landed on us. Gen down. I'm trying to take roof. Oh. Are they up there? Yep, yep. Drop yep. down, drop down. I'm covering you. I had uh, Valk 38. Sky need. Just want them to show themselves. Cross the way over here, one of them. Yep. It's a different team. There might be multiple teams here. If we can, we might want to take uh, the jump pad out. Okay. We're good to hold for now, though. Yeah. We're sweating like it's ALGS, bro. I'm going to climb on roof again, see if he's still up there. Yeah, they're not there. They ran. They're running. We got roof clear. Yeah, yeah. We got one down here, though. Got one 441. Coming back in. Oh. Drop, drop, drop. Yep. I got your cover. Do you have heavy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll drop two stacks. Okay. Heavy ammo here. Thank you. Got one. Alright, I'm gonna bat to reset. Yep. 
I'm gonna drop on him if you hold him there. Where's he at, Ping? Uh, right here. Okay, I'm dropping. Yep. Pushing. Nice, good job. Yeah. Use a phoenix. The other team left, so. Oh shoot, there's, there's another team here! That sucks. Just run, yeah. Reset. Oh, fudge. You're good. <laughs> that was a good fight. That was clean. Otherwise, that was really good. The only, like, some people are asking, what do you need to do at that point to avoid the third party? I mm -hmm. uh, Just in terms of not getting greedy with heals, I could have just swapped off the guy and batted immediately and repositioned, but I was going for the Phoenix just because I thought I had more time because the other team left. Just little decision making like that makes a big difference. And that comes with time, you know, sometimes you get greedy and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's bring somebody else in from chat. L Londonade, I want to just thank you so much for uh, being the first one just to kind of go through this coaching. Oh yeah, of course, man. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no worries, bro. Thank you again. And uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a DM and for any like follow-up questions or tips that you guys have, okay? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll DM you uh, just like... I guess uh, you said you might have a playlist or something, uh, but I'll just DM you. Yeah, hopefully it was educational and helpful for you, bro. For sure. I'm going to rewatch it probably a few times. Have a good S one, man. Sweet, man. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, bye. All right let's, bring, uh, let's bring Jordy V in. I don't know how long. Uh, Jordy, are you here? Oh, let me unmute him. Sorry. Sorry, are you here, Jordy? Hello? Test, test, test. Maybe we need to drag you back up and up and down. Hello. All right, there you are. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I have my uh, mic on. Push it on. You're good. You're good. Um, do you have me added, or do I have you added by chance? Oh uh, no, it's my first time with you. All right, awesome. Good to meet you, by the way. Um, Jordy, yeah, do you prefer awesome. Jordy or do you prefer V? Uh, Jordy. Jordy's fun. Okay. All right, Jordy. Let's get into this. Um, can you add me, Soar underscore Daz? Yes. Let me see. For recoil control, yeah, Baba Yaga. Essentially, you're just trying to beat the recoil by over flicking on it. It's very, very straightforward. Um, there, I, th I think I don't know why there's two sword dances. Is, is, are you Deets? Yes, that's me. Awesome. Let's do this. Okay. Let's uh grab you in here, Deets. But you prefer, but you for, prefer Jordy, right? Uh, Jordy's fine. I, I really don't care, but yeah, Jordy's where you should go by. Okay, let's hop in the firing range and let's do this. We're gonna do three starting off. Um, don't even tell me your input or the legends that you made. I'm gonna try to do my best to, to kind of deduce it from there, okay? All right, all right, sounds good, I like that. Pretty excited to be honest. I didn't expect you to get picked second. <laughs> I'm just, I was just kind of doing it random on a whim. I, I just saw people Ooh. in Discord, so I'm just kind of grabbing and just bringing people up, so. I mean, if you guys are waiting in there, awesome. You know, there's no reason. It, by the way, chat, um, there's only so many people I can get through in, in a single session. So I'm doing the best I can. But if I miss you, I apologize. But nonetheless, if you're watching, the whole point is to watch and just learn. Um, same as before, Pardon. grab yourself an R99. Deck that baby out. Grab yourself a wing, Wingman. So for those that are curious why we do Wingman R99, the reason why, Wingman has the lowest bullet velocity in the game, has the highest skill cap in the game as well which is a great gun to practice and warm up with, especially if you're looking for accuracy to improve your aim. And the reason why we use the RD9 is because the recoil pattern is the one of the most aggressive, and especially when you're in a 1v1 trying to control the recoil pattern of the RD9, compared to let's say the 301 or the flat line, you're going to, you're going to uh, really improve the fastest. It's gonna help you out the most. Oh, is my mic fine or am I making a lot of noise? It's hot right now, but it's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's it's a webcam. My my, my uh, other mic broke, so <laughs> don't worry. I'm pretty sure everyone chat understands. It's all good. It makes it feel more authentic. It makes it feel more authentic, chat, right? Like I'm literally bringing random peeps from chat, and like it could be any one of you guys that are learning to improve and try to get better at Apex. Okay, so just so I figure out how your play style, uh, you can start here if you want. I'll start on this side. We're gonna do some one v ones. If you if you beat me, great. If you don't, it's fine as well. Uh, oh shoot, grab yourself armor, bro. Grab yourself a full oh, set yeah, of yeah, uh, yeah. red and everything. Yeah. We're gonna do three rounds. I'm just gonna try to do different things to see what your play style is and how you play. Does the gold mine or the the gold um 
knock down ladder? Uh, yeah. Grab just this whole line. Right here, this whole line. Make sure your wingman has a gold mag on it. Make sure your R99 has a gold mag on it. Um, and your favorite sight on that weapon as well. It could be any sight. Just whichever one you like the most. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Is this a random viewer? Yeah. I'm just bringing uh, random peats from chat. Um, they joined into the Discord and they're all viewers of the channel. Yeah, I'll just browse them on YouTube. When I saw you live. I was like, oh shit. And then, uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, does profanity matter? Um, ideally none, but I mean, Hey, okay. if it happens, it happens, you know, I'm not, know. you know, you know how YouTube is, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah. YouTube is a little strict on it. So I, I'm not one to, to kind of curse unless I'm like really like close and personal to people. But if I'm ever yeah. alive, you ever meet me in person, I, I don't curse. So it's just kind of the, uh, I guess you could say it was beaten into me because I, I worked in human resources for like eight years. So I got oh, used, okay. I got used to not cursing for a long time. But if you if you catch me and we're just vibing and chilling, and I know you personally, then I I'll, I'll yeah. curse and joke around. All right, so let's okay. do three one v ones here. Ready? Three. I'll just... Oh yeah. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Very nice. So I completely threw, even from my first wall bounce. I'm I'm sad. <laughs> Alright, ready? Good stuff, dude. Go ahead and heal up. Oh yeah. Oh, do I change uh, legend? Yeah, change legends. It's the fastest way. Okay, we go again. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Enemy down. Okay, one more time. Might I might need one extra one. Ready? Three, two, one, go. They spotted me. I'm taking shots. Very nice. Holy, you're cracked. Let's go one more time. Okay. All right, ready? Three, two. Oh one. no no no! Oh yeah, you're yeah, my bad. And be sure to pick wraith. Because of the hitbox? Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one, go. I'm taking shots. Okay. Man, you're so fast around the corners and stuff. The move. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, figure out what input you're on as well. Um, mouse and keyboard, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you run a higher sense. I want to. No. You run a low sense. Uh, 800 and what's it? Let's see here. 1.4. That's low, right? Mm, it's, it's mid range. Uh, just FYI, Timmy runs around like he runs 10 inches per 360. You're at 14. So this oh, is the, wow. you're kind of like in between. The last guy we just aim trained with was 18. He's he's I would say on the lower spectrum. Just yeah. FYI, Shroud used to run 13.45. You run 14.6. So you're a little slower than what, like example like what Shroud runs. Oh okay. So I put it, my uh oh sorry. No no go ahead go ahead. I put my uh, thing into. I think it was, he's aim tamer. I think it was Kovac, and they said it was like 34 centimeters per 360. Yeah, for inches, if we convert that to centimeters, it's 37 oh, okay. centimeters. And then for inches, it's yeah. uh, 14. I know, I'm... Honestly, I, I use the Imperial system because I'm a dumb American still, so <laughs> I, I need I need to switch and use centimeters more to be honest. So I apologize to anybody from chat that no. I that I don't use the uh, I need to use the metric system better instead of the Imperial system because I know I, I say inches and people are like who measures stuff by inches? You know, I'm like I, <laughs> I, I mean I use <laughs> I just use whatever that yeah. So no, you're, it's not it's not a, a fast sensitivity. It's kind of like an in between. So it's it's not bad. Oh. It, it's a it's a really strong sense. My sensitivity uh, for the longest time. I said, no, actually, Shroud used to run twelve point four five. I used to run thirteen point four five myself. So you're you're right around the range of like just kind of finding a nice equilibrium. It's not the fastest. It's not the slowest. I know Tifu yeah. used to run like twenty inches per three sixty. So you're around fourteen. So you're not 
the lowest end, you're not the highest end. But for M and K, really, really strong. Um, I, I like it. Let's go this way. You like the sense? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought I was on the lower end because I just felt like naturally I was just a player. Yeah. I used to run 400 and then a the really low sense, but I hated the 400 DPI. Yeah. So you're really strong so far in close range. We're going to do, let's just climb up. I want to see how you do just climbing up on this thing. Ready? Something good this way. Three, two, one. Oh. Uh, sorry, sorry. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, awesome. uh, okay. I'm good. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we're going to go again. I actually may... Let's, let's do one more other thing. Um, start here, Listen, and uh, I'm going to start over here really, really far. You're going to wide swing to your right, and I'm going to wide swing to my left, okay? And you're going to pull out the, the one R99? Man, wingman. Oh. Okay, well, ready? Let's see. <laughs> <R99>. <laughs> I mean, it, could, it can work from a distance too. Ready? Three, two, one, go. I can't seem to land this last shot. I'm crying. Yeah, we're about that. <laughs> the wingman is so oh. difficult to do at this range. Is why I'm having you do it. Okay. How, how's my movement, by the way? Uh, honestly... Your movement's good. Okay. Your movement's good. All right, we're gonna so go good. again. Compared to when I was watching you, I'm just... <laughs> I felt like I was just like a. Your movement's fine. I I would say um. I, what I'm trying to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. This is why when I was when I was using longbow earlier with uh, London Aid, the longbow has a way faster bullet velocity. But I'm trying to figure out what your weaknesses are in terms of like distance. So we're gonna go again, and we're gonna go to the left again. Okay. Uh, uh, you can pull out the R99 and switch if you need to. Okay. Yeah, I'll try the one. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, very nice. Oh my God. Okay. Wait, I killed him. Yeah, you did good. <laughs> Dude, I didn't even expect that. All right, so let's grab. Um, I'm gonna grab a longbow. I feel like you for M and K and your control, you're really good with precision shots. Um, which is good. I mean, it's great. It's great to see. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, just trade out your wingman for a longbow, just tempor or temporarily. Um, and just use the irons on it. And we're gonna add a little bit more velocity to it. Remove the RNG factor. Let me see how you do. Put a gold mag on it, and then I want to see how you do. I need help with better aim. Is literally what we're, what I'm working on with Dietz right now in terms of identifying where his weaknesses are. I think I know what they are, but I'm trying to push him in terms of precision right now to see. Uh, do you want me to get a barrel stabilizer? Um, uh, no barrel save. Just just the gold mag. Beluga, what's going on? It's good to see you. Okay, let me know when you're up here. All right, so same thing. We're gonna wide gonna... swing out. I just need to see how you do with precision, and if and if you do good with that, I'm gonna push you even further, just so I know. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, this this Let's side. This oh, sorry, sorry. Hey, you're good. We're gonna do it again. Ready? Three, oh, two, one, go. Okay, Enemy down. you're doing just fine. I'm gonna push you a little further. Um, we are gonna do irons. You're gonna stand all the way in the back over here, here, and I'm gonna stand all the way back over here. Okay. And we're gonna do a three, two, one. I haven't even done this. I'm just trying to push you so that I know how far you can go. All right. Like the of one. What's that? I said, uh, wait, is my mic? Uh, no? It's cutting in and out a little bit, but you're, okay, so you're good. I you're good. To, I lowered the um, sensitivity or raising. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So um, is this good? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to shoot from this distance with irons. Okay. okay. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Yeah. 
I'm using your chips from the last session. <laughs> Actually, where's the Nice, good stuff. Yeah. Alright, so you, gosh, your precision is really, really great. Really, really good. Wow, thank you, thank you. I honestly do not expect that. Okay, so what I'm going to push you, because I, I, I think I know what your weakness is, is we're going to do the R9s again, and we're going to pretty much do close quarters here, and then we're going to do mid-range here. Because your precision in terms of landing shots are great. I think that's probably your, your biggest strength. I feel like your biggest weakness that you need to improve upon is not your long range shots, but it's going to be close range in terms of using like an R99 or even a wingman. Yeah. All right, ready? Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one. Do I jump up? Yeah, yeah, we're going to jump up. Okay, okay. Or just do whatever you want to do in terms of, I'm going to be trying to pretty much get in your face. Ready? Okay, okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is where you where you struggle. This is your uh, yeah. this this is your your weak spot, but it's not a bad thing. You honestly are going to be able to have great entry damage. And in terms of mains, if I were to guess who you main, it'd either be like either Loba, Valkyrie. Let me pull up the list of characters. Um, Gibraltar, uh, so, and anybody who's more support. Even like a Pathfinder would be great for off angles in terms of like probably what you play most. Am I, am I kind of on the right track? Yeah, Loba was my. Uh top one um i used to play a lot of uh lifeline when the first game first came out yeah um i really enjoyed loba's like alt though just like the looting nice i'm glad that i even um, said loba first i was, yeah. was kind of like like i'm pretty much thinking anything where you can provide support and angles in terms of getting long range shots is pretty much where you spent most of your time on this game um the thing is it's kind of contradicting because i i usually prefer the close screen en engagements like the r99 yeah uh, peacekeeper stuff like that but I've been kind of slacking on it recently, so I kind of uh, dialed it back a little bit. But you, so, you, it's it's weird because you're 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 much stronger on your long range shots, much much stronger. Meaning really that because I only said the opposite. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, it's always the opposite of what we really what we really want, right? <laughs> yeah, really. All right, so let's go again. Let's get let's get you comfortable along this range. Actually, let's let's climb up here. I want to see how you let's do even mid range with the R ninety nine. Just R ninety nine only, okay? Yeah. Okay. Ready. Uh, sorry, I just want to say one more thing about sure. the mains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started picking up a little bit more Gibraltar. Um, Bloodhound is what I play in the like, rank these days. I just really like the, uh, the scanning. So I don't know if I guess oh, that yeah. kind of falls into support. Yeah, pretty much you're not the, the full-on entry fragger. You're the person who yeah. comes in and cleans things up. Like, yeah, like if, I, if I were to see your entry fragger, I would say Wraith, Horizon, um, whoever's going to be the first one pushing in, Octane. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I used to play a lot of Octane. You know, like if you were gonna entry frag, you would you would be the first one in the fight, just inting full on, just going all in. Um, doesn't mean you can't I, all int as a as a support player, but somebody else is usually probably playing a lot more aggro, I think, than you the are. Thing is, I, the thing is, I only started taking my aim seriously a bit recently, and that's I think I started to pick up more of that aggro playstyle, and it's got me killed a lot because I just go in and just like potato or just die first, and then I have to like the team just sitting there just looking at me. You, all you got to so, do is keep more calm like you are with the long range shots i know you said you know with a tip in terms of not being able to see the target but when when yeah. you're shooting long range there's there's less pressure and anxiety right and i can yeah. tell that's why i kept pushing you longer and longer and it didn't really matter because you were keeping calm but the minute i put pressure on you close range oh yeah that's I you really over you over flick and start to kind of start to panic a little bit yeah. uh, at least that's what i sense like even i was struggling to land those shots that's why we grab longbow from a distance because you remove a little bit of the rng but even yeah. around that range, I probably need to practice a lot more. Uh, but that, at that point, I hope to God that I'm grabbing more of a 6X. And probably mm -hmm. that's what feels more comfortable with me grabbing a 6X, 3X with a sniper to hit the, at that range. Yeah. I honestly, if if I ever caught myself shooting at somebody from that range to that range, you'd see me start to run in and try to close it, close the gap in terms of what my ideal engagement is. Like, But you yeah. you have those shots. You need to take more of them. You have the ability to uh, to go for long range shots. You just need to trust yourself, and the same trust goes into your close range encounters. 
right? Yeah, I've been get, I, when I start to really get into it, like really focused and honed in, I my legs start shaking. My I start to get a little bit shaky. You you essentially you need like to do you need to do more of these one v ones like this over yeah. and over and over again until it just feels so comfortable you don't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah, that's pretty much going to be your solve. Um, but if you're breathing, even even I, I would actually recommend to you, whenever you're do you, do you aim train? You said you've just been aim training recently, right? Yeah, I'm just starting for like two weeks now, but okay. kind of inconsistent. But I try to get more consistent with it. I'm gonna have a video out on this, but what I highly recommend for you to get into that flow to feel that pressure, uh, aim train to the beat of a song. Um, oh. listen to your favorite song, and like this is a, I know this is like very different from what I was telling uh, Lemonade. Uh, London Aid essentially, but you have a, a different set of uh, things to work on. Like London Aid has to work on his broad movement and then also his finite movement. You don't have to work on your fine movement as much. You need to work on folk, like calming down. So yeah. how you're going to do that, like find your song and then use, oh, I don't know, it doesn't matter, six shot ultimate on aim lab. You can use grid shot, tile frenzy on it, whatever platform you're going to use and click to the beat yeah. of the sound. So like, let's say like you're using um, Van Halen, uh, a song or something like the downbeat or whether it's a calmer song or like even if it's mozart you almost like a metronome stay on pace with yeah. the metronome like you're playing guitar hero it's funny you say that because i was actually uh aim training uh, aim, aim training uh this week and yeah. i was listening to like uh like deep drum bass yeah or like or maybe just lo-fi house and i'd start to pick up on the beat and i was like i'd go with it but then i'd start to get out of the beat because um i just didn't want to mess up my I guess let it pattern. mess up your aim let it mess up your aim and when, when i say mess up because you're feeling the pressure because you have to keep yeah, up with the, the beat right you need to yeah. feel constant pressure and so find your favorite song and then click to the beat of the song and find faster songs then slower songs faster songs and add variety so it gives you like incentive to kind of be in the moment that's what you're looking for wow. to um um to really improve right yeah, yeah so yeah. I, what i want to see next is just climb up here and then i just want to see how you do with micro uh, tracking at this distance okay ready going to drop down all the way on top. I'll jump on. yep ready yeah. three two one go oh sorry, sorry, sorry oh you're sorry. good you're good we can reset just between that ledge so it's just like the hip up essentially yeah okay ready okay. Yeah. three two one go Yeah, well, you you pretty much are, are like, you're a lot better than you gave yourself credit for. Oh my god, dude! Do you like you you have it? So drop down again. Let's do that again. Um, uh, are you gonna guess my rank or are you? Um, no. you, I feel like you probably hit masters before at least. No. <laughs> what what is your rank? Oh, I'll make another guess. I want. I honestly want to know. Um, D three. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm right now. I haven't played a lot, so I'm currently silver three. Debbie just never, do you not put the time into rank? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm kind of, I guess you could say I'm a little bit anxious to play because what the things I do is I aim the train, I get warmed up, and I go into trios, I start with arenas. Okay, then, so this this is you literally know. your solve. Like you, you don't realize how easy it, it will be for you as a player. Maybe, maybe I go in game and realize that your decision making is just like, not very good but mm -hmm. it, i i guarantee you it's not i know you have good decision making you can get out of silver literally to get out of silver you drop hot get it's one quite... kill and then go to end zone and then you and then you rank yeah. up you That's have to, you have to get past this anxiety level if you are literally at minimum a diamond player and all you got to do is put the time in like literally literally all you have to do is that okay that's all you have to do and my goal was to at least reach platinum too uh, that's easy all it is is time like if, if you say yeah. that's all that's all you need if you drop hot get two kills like w when you're in pubs what have you do you have any 20 bombs any of on any of your characters 20 kill no no what's your highest kill game uh i don't know but i've gotten like 3k i think maybe 4k damage once and that was just recent but that like one time so I, I mean. yeah and then how many kills like could you remember even if it's like 10 11 um maybe at least like 10 i think if you can get 10 kills you can reach diamond anybody who's watching this chat if you can get 10 kills in a pub you can hit diamond 
Because literally, you just need two kills. If you got two kills at minimum every single game, even if there were two assists and let other people do it, then I guarantee you, if you just, like, let's say you, you were in the squad and you only got two assists, but you, you've dished out 3k damage and 4k damage. You know how to dish out damage. You will reach diamond level, but you just got to put time in. That's all it is. Yeah. It's not a matter of, like, being good enough. It's just a matter of you putting time to get to that rank and level. Like the way yeah. you're flicking and the way you're reacting, I I've I've ran into diamond players who are way worse. Like people mm. who who are almost incompetent in terms of shooting but put time in, right? Wow. Well, I mean that gives me a lot of confidence now that you say that because I literally just started playing like mid season and probably like a month now I was really when I started playing Apex again. What game were you uh did you play prior? Um I played I popped into Apex like a while ago, uh, a few seasons back. Okay. But it wasn't like as serious. I like I said, I never really played ranked like that. Um, I wanted to do the same thing I'm doing now, which is to get better in my aim. But I stopped. I was a bit, like I said, a bit inconsistent. But I played FPS games before. But yeah. I haven't really dialed in and, and focused to the way I am now to try and get better. You're I just you, play casual. If you can burst past the anxiety level, you 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 got it, dude. All right, let's hop up and let's do this two more times, and we're gonna do this three more times. I'm gonna hop in my alt account. I think it's bronze. Um, I think maybe sword Daz. We're gonna do a ranked match together. I'm gonna show you how easy it is for you to rank up, and just kind of give you that morale boost. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's a little different. You just have you have to get past the 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 anxiety of like trying to perform and do do well. Because if I if I yeah. calm you down and I keep pushing you and like and like essentially stretching you to do way. different things, like you can you can you can do it. It's crazy. Like you, you as long as I keep you calm, then you're yeah. good. Okay, ready? Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one, go. Your sprays are great, dude. Not gonna lie. I, I I literally, if you go all watch my video with Loki Ross, I literally absolutely destroyed him. I love Ross, but even if I'm landing a majority of my shots, I'm I'm you know I'm definitely struggling <laughs> against you. You you can land your shots. So this is okay. This is why I tell people all the time. Remember my video talking about how to find uh, teammates in Apex Legends? Hold on one second. It's a. Uh, it's th just trusting and just building up people. Like when I first met Sarah, literally Sarah is about to hit masters. When I first met her, she was so scared and said that she like she was gold and that she wasn't good enough to play this game. I sat down and, yeah. and coached her the same way and you see it in the videos and she's literally masters. Like she's about to hit masters. Oh wow. <laughs> so it like it's from your coaching. Yeah, and like well, it's you guys. You guys are putting the work. Sarah put in the work and the time. And it, it's like hers is she has the same issue like you do. It's confidence. London Aid he has confidence, but he's got to just work on some of the fundamentals and the uh, the breakdown. Like it's it's clear in his comms too. Like you're you just need to calm yourself down so then you can capitalize. That's pretty much it. Yeah, like Every even right now my leg is shaking, but it's not like I I don't think it affects my aim. But you know, I, it will. I, like you just have to calm yourself down. That's really yeah. all it is. Like so there's some people who have natural talent, and all you got to do is just calm yourself down um, to really capitalize on it. And there's, uh, but I mean, that's easier said than done. Like, here's an example. I, I went to school for musical theater and I, I definitely had talent in singing and acting, but every time I went on stage, I would throw up. I got sick. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was a curse and a blessing. It kept me like engaged. I was always like, just like almost like shaking nervous. But when I was on stage, the energy turned into like focus. The downside, yeah. if somebody doesn't get sick or that nervous when they go on stage, they got to find the energy somewhere. So it's like, it, there's always a curse and blessing to this stuff. Would Londonade love to have your precision? Sure. But does he want to have to deal with the anxiety of it? Probably not. Like it, everyone's yeah. is going to go through their own battles of how to improve and get better at this game. Right? Yeah. I've 1v1 so many people. I've even 1v1 hollowed in here. And hollow pretty much has like the similar aim style that you have. And that dude has thousands of hours in this game, you know? Mm. Okay. Let's, what's, uh, that, what's the aim style? Like precision? Um, I mean, he literally does everything. Like he's probably one of oh. the best aimers, aimers in the game. And so I, I don't know like all of these names you're calling. Out. Oh, you're good. <laughs> so I would just just put in the time. I'm not trying to inflate your ego or anything, but just have confidence. Calm yourself down, and I guarantee you can do better than what you give yourself credit for. I, I feel like that's a common thing with what I tell everyone. But if you reset it and you analyze what your strengths are, then you can really capitalize. Okay, let's do one of the ones here. I'm gonna hop in my alt account. We're gonna go do a few rank games together. 
Um, but I'm bronze in that account, and you said you're silver, so, I mean, we should be yeah. able to just fry these lobbies. Like, it'll be kind of a joke. But it'll be educational, yeah. so you can see the, the confidence that you that you can have uh, in those games. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. You can switch to... Oh, shoot. We have a longbow. Yeah, we well, got the DMR. Uh, I switched to it. It's a wing I'll let you kill me. <laughs> I, we need to switch. Let's go grab the. Uh, okay. Let's grab the yeah. wingman. I switched. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. After you said swamp, I swamped too. Then I realized. Yeah. That's my bad. All right. Let's go grab uh, the longbows, and we're gonna do that just two more times around here, and then we're gonna we're gonna go grind. But yeah, I think based on my uh, prior experience in uh, ranks and the losses, or just in the game in general, is uh, when I get down to like the last circle, when it's like the last few groups. I think that's when I start to really get anxious and, and miss a lot of my shots. I, I, I'm i going to tell you something funny. I actually didn't ever play any Battle Royales until I played um, Player Known Battleground. And then Apex was my first Battle Royale that I took seriously. Like, I would play Battlefield. That was, that was the game I played. Oh, yeah, same. Um, so, when I played PUBG and I won my first game in a Battle Royale, my hands were shaking. Like, I still remember, like, the fact that I was yeah. at the last zone. Like, oh, my God, there's only two people left. And, like, I was shaking. When I play wow. BRs and stuff now, I I don't I don't, no longer shake. I like could almost care less. Yeah, but it takes time. It takes time to get to that point, you know. Yeah. Okay, ready? It's, it's kind of just the confidence of uh, knowing that you're gonna do well. Or exactly. You've been in this situation before. Ready? Yeah, Three, two, one, go. Jeez, bro. Some oh good aim, God. bro. Seriously. I, like, I don't know. I'd say it's just an anomaly. I'm telling you. I don't know, man. There's no such thing as an anomaly whenever you're consistent. So, going to switch uh, back and okay. forth. I'll get you. All right, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Wow, bro. Seriously. Like, I'm, I literally almost one magged you, and then you just follow up with crazy shots. That's good. I, I don't know, man. I, I'm really, I'm speechless myself. I mean, it, it just, it just takes somebody to pull it out of you. That's all it takes. So, like, I remember whenever TSM's roster was first signed, and like just taking the shot on somebody and enabling them to do well goes so far. Seriously, ready? Yeah. Three, okay. two, okay. one, go. So the only thing that I'm, right what's that? So you really put me in my place right there. Well, it's, it's the, the wall hugging kind of threw me off. I can't ego challenge you, and this is this is the, this is the thing. Like when you know that you can't ego challenge somebody, you're gonna have to just pretty much outthink them. So what do you mean by ego challenge? Them? So like let's say for example that like Shroud is a, is a genius at doing this stuff. There's also a good friend of mine. Uh, his name is Stod. You know who Stoddy is from Battlefield? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Stod and I talk a whole lot as well. He's a really good dude. I uh, like we've hung out in events. He's and like okay, so Stod and Shroud, what makes them so good is that they don't have to ego challenge everything. They know how to make somebody fall into a mistake and play. I can't yeah. ego challenge you. The, the, the ego challenge is like if I fly over your head and I say, I'm going to 1v1 you now, you'll probably yeah. beat me. Shoot, you might even beat Shroud or Sod, right? But the difference is I pretty much have to outthink you and keep make, having you make little mistakes until I dwindle you down. Right. That's the difference whenever you're playing ranked against a good player. Like I, I, do, I do this a lot too whenever I pretty much ego somebody and just say i can i can aim better and then you just pretty much get put in your place or like oh my bad i'm so sorry forgive me i'm just gonna yeah. get uh, absolutely destroyed now right mm -hmm. so chat so you guys are aware that's literally like the difference between like ego challenging versus playing smart um so like when i like i'm not trying to go soft on him i'm literally trying to ego and push and do as much damage as possible but he's destroying me mm -hmm. flat out he just he's just beating me he's better at those <laughs> close range encounters despite how many hours wow. i have and all my aim training but I need to outthink him. So I have to outthink him by doing different things to get him to make a mistake. And that's where yeah. my experience will come in is just knowing that how I can get you to make a mistake. But if you're yeah. a fast learner, which I anticipate you are, you'll be able to counteract me at some point. And then it becomes a game of chess. And that's what makes Apex Legends such a fascinating game because it becomes just a game of chess. Like 
Imperial Howl versus, uh, let's just say, I don't know, let's say Dropped or even Rogue. They're all great players. Their aim is insane. You put them on 1v1, they're going to constantly Imperial Howl win one time, and then Rogue will win another time, then Dropped will win another time, then Timmy will win another game. It's like, it's all at that point RNG. What adds the element of the, of the difference is whether are they going to white peak? Are they going to make a mistake? Are they going to bait him? What are they going to do? How they're going to throw them off? That is what makes takes your gameplay to the next level. And you're going to need that. you got to play ranked, dude. I, I promise you. After, yeah. Let's do one more of these. I'm going to hop in the alt. Yeah. We're going to go play ranked. And then I uh, I want to see what you do. I, I want to okay. get you up there. All right, ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, wait. Oh, you showed I hit you with a flesh. Oh, you must have hit the target in the back. <laughs> so what I do, essentially, is... I know you're super accurate, but if I can get you to miss like four or five shots on your R99, and then I run up on you, at least I know that you have yeah. less ammo and you have less damage output. That's the type yeah, of mind games. Like that's the type of mind games that you get to play with somebody if you realize. It's almost like when you go into engagement, you're never gonna know how skilled the player is, but you have to assume that everyone that you're facing up against is really talented and really good. So then you can always win your encounter. So let's say you're finding somebody who's using a devotion and spraying the weapon, right? Let's just say they got a devotion, they're spraying down a hall. And they won't stop, and then you hear, and you know that they're reloading. That's your moment to push, yeah. Because they're they're literally reloading your wep their weapon, and they're down and out. Even if they if they don't, let's say they shot a little bit with the R99, and you don't know if they reloaded their gun. It's a moment to possibly wide swing them because either one, they're caught out on the reload, or two, they haven't even reloaded their gun, and they're gonna dish out less What's damage. Him? Yeah. Okay. So, um. No, go, go to ask your question. It, uh. Well, I was gonna say I think that um. As far as my gameplay, I always felt like my my decisions and positioning were bad. Every time I'd like get down in a, like a, a trio or whatever, I'd be like, okay, my position was really bad there. And it happens a lot because I, I think I just play like too aggressive sometimes. Let's let's find out when we go play uh, ranked. I know it's not going to be the best uh, telltale, essentially, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm going to log into my alt account real quick. Can you add me? It's a uh, maybe underscore sore underscore daz. So it's okay. going to be this account right here. Sora underscore Daz. And then I'm going to hop in. Um, so you, guys, you're going to see a black screen for a second. I just need one moment to um, to load into the other account. So two seconds, guys. I don't encourage smurfing. We're, what we're doing here is for educational purposes only. And I have my other account whenever all the other stuff is loaded up too much, so... This is educational, educational purposes. I rarely you, use this account. Did you type the name somewhere? I uh, um I typed it in chat. Let me type it in Discord for oh, you. God. Um, give me a second. Maybe underscore sore underscore das. Okay, and then I'm gonna load up the game in chat. Two seconds. Let's see here. And the black screen will go away. I apologize, chat. Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay. I'm just loading up the game. And then we'll be hey. good to go. Oh, I wanted to ask, um, what makes you, uh, what's your favorite thing about Watson? Um, it just teaches me not to be dumb. <laughs> Why, because you have to like play a bit more defensive. Yeah, I have to play smart. I just can't run out in the open and then just queue back like a maniac. Yeah, we're trying, we're doing our best to give as much coaching as possible. All right, I got your friend request. Let me play. I don't even know who I want to play. We'll play Bloodhound for information, just so I could coach a little better on him, on them. All right, let me shoot you an invite. Yeah, I'm bronze one on this account. Perfect. And what are you on this account? Uh, silver three. Silver. You do not belong in silver. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I was gonna push for it before the season and at least get gold. I felt like I can at least get like gold three, maybe gold one, but. Uh... You, you can out. get plat easy if it, and you can literally solo queue this you just kind the problem is that it, it can be really stressful to play with randoms and everything like i get that mm. and it can be really nerve-wracking to have to play with people but you just have to kind of push through and then tell yourself that it, it's not don't let anybody bring down your energy or stress you out when you're trying to play yeah you have to just say 
okay, some people are just angry. It is the way it is. I don't have to worry yeah. about this. This is not because of me. And just kind of push through. Because you're going to run into people who are jerks. And there's, um, there's going to be people who um, are going to be really supportive. And that's just kind of the way the internet. But I know because of, like, you mentioned kind of the anxiety level or the stress that, it, that it's nerve-wracking. So it's like, don't let somebody say, I can't believe you didn't push that. What's wrong with you? Well, you're such dog water. It's a BR. Yeah. It's a battle royale. Honestly, there's no such thing as a poor decision as long as a team does it together. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah I try to brush off people who, you know, just are negative or just, just being, you know, jerks in uh, ranks or just in the game in general. I just like forget and move on. Sometimes, you know, they live rent free, you know, you want to say something to them. Yeah. But, uh, land over here. Oh, We're going to land safe. Oh, oh, well, I, uh, okay, you're trying to give it to you. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, speaking of, I don't, I don't I really don't know where to drop. I just drop wherever's hot sometimes or just drop where I don't see a lot of people going and ranked at least. It, 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 if from bronze all the way till gold, it really doesn't matter as long as you're getting in a fight. Yeah. So this guy's gonna land there. We're gonna land over here. We're gonna land in this these buildings right here. Because there's already three teams here. So run at the rip that's not as good to do because there's gonna be people and they're gonna push you out. This game just to be safe. There's somebody on top of Okay. And the plus side of this MMR, you're not gonna lose that many points. Yeah. Okay, I think they're in this building here. Stuck the blood out. Nice. Down. Pushing oh, up. God. Good arc though. Oh gosh, you got me. You got this. I have one mag and nothing. You're good. I there is a third party. Gun. Play you, play you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had an absolute drive. Well, I kind of landed in your building because when I'll go into everyone. Yeah, zone. I know. But look, you already got. Okay, so this is this is what I'm point out. You already got one kill. You're only minus four uh, RP. You get placement at this point. You're literally good to go. You're already go you're already going up points. You know. Yeah. And you can go back, fight, whatever you need to do. See, I get in a situation like this. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should play it slow and just grab the ball. Over. Yeah, go ahead and top off, yeah. and do you like. At this point, oh. I don't encourage smurfing, but if you get stuck and you don't know how to improve anymore, and you, like, let's say you're, you're stuck diamond for a lot of people, go through ranked again and reset yourself and try to improve to solo queue it. There's no harm if you're solo queuing it, in my opinion, because you're, you're going in with the intention of trying to improve and learn. Because pubs and everything might, might be too stressful for you, and so it's a, it's a good exercise to go through if you're just stuck. Now, I don't encourage, this is what I don't encourage. Three stacking bronze and everyone is on a Smurf account. If you're solo queuing and just trying to help others and do your thing and just kind of be a part, then I don't really see the too much of a harm, especially if we're trying to do for educational purposes like, like right now. I'm going to grab those banners and get out and queue out. Uh, Copy key to the right. Oh. You got it, you got it. There's a few things I could teach you on Lobe, especially whenever you use your bracelet, just be sure to bunny hop. Oh, okay. Uh, is that the closest one? Yeah, that works on the left. And there you go. Honestly, once we get top 10, you'll start to get RP. And if literally, this, this wasn't even a great drop. Like, we, we really suffered from our loot that we had in there. You know, like I was using yeah. an RE45. And you only had an arc and you stuck your arc and you got that guy, that guy down. Uh, really lucky on that guy. When you're doing your slides, wait for yourself to build momentum so you can slide jump. You just got to be patient. Yeah, in like two seconds. Um, You'll get the feel for it. Really, what you got to work on, it's not your aim and your engagements. You got to work on slowing things down, focusing on your movement when you have it, and then just getting in it, right? That's really what you yeah. got to fo focus on most. Okay. And is there any way I can, like, isolate that? Go in the test ring, just run around. And then if you're so solo queue silver. It, it Honestly, pubs is going to be harder than silver. Oh, because the the rankings not really balanced. Yeah. 
Because you, 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 you don't know who you're going to run into in silver. You could run into right. somebody who's new. You could run into somebody who's just who hasn't played. Quite literally, in silver, you can run into a pred player who hasn't played the game in three seasons. And that, that happens, you know? Yeah. As, that just sounds like... Like, if I, if I hadn't played the, this game in, like, three seasons, and despite all my time in, I'd get thrown back into silver. You know? Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to take ranking with a bit of grain of salt. Yeah, I got I a random center. trio. I got um matched with, a, I think, Season 7 Predator. Oh, nice. Like, wow. Yeah, I was really surprised. I was like, is that a Predator? All right. At this um, point, we got we uh, we just gotta get loot. So let's loot up epicenter, and then we're gonna rotate in. So you don't have to go right back into the fight and the encounter. Okay, they're up here. Uh, let's go survey. Let's go survey and get get our loot, and then we'll rotate back in. Well, when when should I usually ult? Because I know it gives away your position. Ult whenever you know that there's potential loot in the area. There's this is pick clean. This is rough. All right, we're gonna have to go through skyhook. Let's go skyhook side. I know we need to push a little outside of zone, but we uh, we could use some stuff. We could sit here and craft, but that's not ideal. We're just gonna have to run through the tunnels and we'll we'll push right back in. And we got this. Could have fought them there, but I'd rather you get more RP. Top ten will get you some points. Another thing I've noticed with um, our overall gameplay is that I I kind of just zone out. I forget to like pay attention to like zone. Um, you know, where I should be rotating nukes and stuff like that. And when I do realize that, I'm just like, well, I don't know how to, what's the shoot? Ideally, you just always want to go to zone and have the information to get in sooner. Now, if your team yeah. doesn't have loot and somebody was just res, then you need to get them loot so they can go in and fight. Otherwise, they're not going to have any resources. Kind of like if you have white shields and you're going against someone that has like perfect. You yeah, really want to fight. you want your teammates to be competent to be able to help out because if you just let's say we res and went right to zone and we got into a fight and then you have a gun in hand well then they're not going to be able to provide much value to you right you want them to actually at least be able to fight so the reason also why I'm not pushing in right away is just so I, I want you to kind of I want to see what you do in terms of decision making too as we get to the later zone all right I mean, honestly, we can fight. I mean, I got a wingman, so I'm pretty much set. We're just going to rotate in and just wait for the right moment to actually uh, capitalize. Zinc seems like he's doing pretty decent. Zone is most likely going to pull a landslide or probably sort of towards the west side of the map. I'm guessing this side. Could be wrong, but you just can take educational guesses based on what you've seen before. Another thing I wanted to... um, I, I noticed is that... Uh, Sometimes when I'm just playing, I don't know where to go and I end up just having to follow my teammates. Oh, on me. Oh. He's really low. Got that guy. Uh, Bangalore 33. Cracked. 90 in. Ulting. Is right. someone on the right? Yeah. In the corner. Knock him. Nice. going to ego this kid. I already cracked him, I think. Oh, he's running. I think it was just a duo. It's, it's, a, tr it's a trio. Oh. Here, I'll scan. Oh, I see a third one. Is someone behind us, I think? Keep pushing forward. Got him. Hold that. Alright, I'm coming back. Did someone do it? Yeah, she did. Oh, before she died? Yep. Oh, God. I thought it cancels. It's supposed to. Alright, on my way back. Alright, we just reset. So you probably you got KP out of that for sure, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I killed one person. Alright, remember two kills? You know, now look in your upper right, you literally have points. And we, this, this wasn't, I wouldn't even consider this a great game. This is just like, this is an Maybe okay game, open. you know? Like, this is yeah. like, this is like, okay. If you did this, what does it say in the upper right? How many points do you got? This is only top eight. Uh, plus 30. Plus 30? And then you probably just moved again right now, right? Uh, when I, it was plus 20 after the fight and then plus 30 as a 
Nice. So, well, there you go. Now all you got to do is just put in the time and just keep playing over and over and over again until you can uh, just rank up. Like at this point, guaranteed gold because this this was just an was an okay game, right? Yeah, I, I don't know why I put so much pressure on myself to like always try to perform my best in a ranked when it's pretty much the same as trials and where I'm at. Yeah. And it's a uh, it's much easier than you think, especially for everybody in chat. That's why like ranked is really great just for learning, um, and just improving. You know. Yeah. I, I figure once I go against better players, I'll also get better myself through just. One hundred percent. It'll 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 improve your decision making. Yeah. You'll you'll learn better decision making. So right now, I mean, at the bronze level, like usually what happens is that people at the higher tier level would just like, you would have, you would have to camp more. You have to wait for the op right opportunity. So you don't get thirded yeah. and don't get pushed. Right. But at this MMR, yeah. you don't have to worry as much. I mean, nice there's really not much else to fear at this level. You can just run around and just wait for the right opportunity yeah. just to fight. Yeah. yeah. I've been, um, watching a lot of, uh, his watching, you know, his watching. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna watch a lot of uh, this movie recently. Man, it's crazy out there in the private or yeah, predator ranks. Man, finds like people get beamed, but just like showing their face for like half of a second. And that just comes through decision making. And don't, uh, you're what you're seeing is master and pred lobbies. Yeah. Diamond lobbies, you may not even run into that very often. I mean, it happens, but it also you it'll prep you for the mistakes that you make at masters and preds, so you don't just wide swing everything. You know. Mm. Yeah, I figured the game is different from Diamond to Predator. Like, it's like a whole different game altogether. Yeah. Isn't it? Kind of. You just got to play more pa uh, patiently. Oh, um, okay. Because I, I noticed with the MMR, they, they match um, Diamond with the Predators. So, yeah. You know, some cues aren't so long, but. Top four. I'm just running around looking for a team, but nobody's. Uh... Appearing. Level two. I suppose this is right usually what I do, just kind of run and look for teams. Yeah, at this, at, from anybody in chat, from this level all the way in, you just have to fight. Please, yeah. everybody in chat, the best coaching advice I can give in terms of improving, just go fight. You have to fight. If you can't win your ones, it's very clear, like Deets, I, I guarantee you he can win his ones going all the way up until diamond level. Like, he'll feel that comfortable. Just go fight. And when you learn how to fight and get into engagements, you're going to be better for it. Oh, they're center. They're holding up there. Look at that. Okay. on the road. They have height. We may need back from this. Back, 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 back. Go this way. There's another team on the other side. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, is it good to move back up? There's a guy over on the left. I don't know if he's part of the same squad or not. That guy's ISO though. Let's go push him if he is part of a. Uh... I'm getting punished. I'm gonna ult just so I can get more information. Yeah, this is a whole different squad. Need to watch our back in a second, but at least we know where two of the squads are. So there's only one squad unaccounted for. Yeah. There's two there and there's two up top. Oh, I see someone ziplining. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of hold here and wait for them to make a mistake. Yeah. Oh, we're pushing up. Yeah, yeah. Don't overextend it. Wait for the other team because the other team is also rotating out north. Making contact with enemy. I saw the other team. Yeah, I'll scan. I don't know where the other guy went. Okay, there's three. I don't know where the other three went. Uh, so where, where should we position him? We just wait. We hold. There, there's the other scan. We literally hold and wait right here. Like we have decent positioning. This isn't bad, as long as you just wait. Yeah, I think... We have zones, they have to run to us. I think if you weren't here, I'd probably just push them. Yeah, well, the problem is, no matter how good or bad the players are, you it's it's not smart to take a 
fight from low ground. Yeah. Even if I were to crack that kid, I'm, I'm just pretty much swapping damage for the sake of swapping damage. But even if I crack him, it's not like I can jump on it. Even if I had the Pathfinder zip up, yeah, okay, okay. I should get I should get sprayed down by the time I get over there. So we're not really gaining anything from this. We can't capitalize on it. No, there's nothing to capitalize on this from here. Other than like shield damage. Or shield evolution. Pretty much. And just putting pressure to know that we're going to put up a fight. We're not going to let him have it for free. They're going to be less inclined to push and be a little bit more nervous and pensive just because we're here. And I want them to push that other team over there. Yeah, what happened to the guys behind us? They, they went north. They literally skated oh. past them. They're, they're, two teams are over here. And I need for them to run into each other. But I don't know if they're actually going to run into each other. For some reason, they're just literally skirting by each other. Yo, Spacey, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. All right, let's back up. Zone's probably gonna pull this way. We can take height up here. Oh yeah. Oh, I just got shot from. Um... Yep. They're over here. Let's back up over here. We gotta rotate to zone in a second. Hold on. Where's he shooting from? This way. Oh, okay. That shot him. He's low. Oh. Oh, I thought was... oh, I thought was... We might be able to make a play out of this. One's ISO in this. Oh, yeah, yeah. 45 on him. Please. Ulting. There's someone nearby as well. I'm gonna uh, arc start the door. Okay, nice. Oh, I just got stuck. You're back, back, back. I got you covered. 90 on one. Oh, I just got knocked. One push. Please. There's still another one to the left, yeah. Okay, you're good, you're good. I'm gonna res you in a and second unless he gets you. Back. Alright, 3v2 now. Yeah, I'm dead. You're good, you're good. One just... Yeah, I'm batting. Alright, 3v2, just reset and heal and we got this. The other team's rotated on the far right, so we got less to worry about right now. 90 on Valk, we push. Yeah, I'm pushing. Oh, they rezzed. Pushing back right now. Got her. One on the right there. Yeah, I'm pushing right. him. So behind a little bit. Yeah, it's the last one. You have to go. Uh, I'm not going to bullshit out. Oh, on top of the hill. All right. Full squad's right. dead. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were Scanning. Let me back up, okay? You're good, you're good. Batting. I got your cross. We're gonna have to move to zone. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, zone. Rotate, just rotate left, rotate left. We're gonna have to leave the path. I don't think we're gonna be able to res them. I think we just gonna have to leave you, man. Yep. We're all scanning two seconds. Three, two, one. So One's guy's ISO, that guy's ISO, yep. He's cracked. He's Careful, this guy's oh, moving no. up. Yep. He's cracked. cracked. Nice. Mind. Cracked another one. Oh, uh, he, he's like one shot. Ah, right. uh, good try. Second place. There you go. I, I, I really potatoed there on the horizon. I could have killed him. I had a full mag. That's okay. So, so what you did there is that you wide swung on him. Um, like we had it. You got to play the 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 boxes and edges. You can land your shots. Like I know you can. All you got to do is wait for the right moment for somebody to make a mistake and then we push on it. But see, see what I mean? Second place with the amount of kills we got, like that's that's yeah. a huge amount of RP, dude. Huge amount. And that was like a horrible start to the round, right? Yeah, it was absolutely horrendous. You just got to play yeah. patient. Like you can lay in your shots. And th so this is re really this is a really good teaching moment for everyone in chat. It's not a matter if you can land all of your shots, right? It's a matter if you can land the shots when they matter. So like even with like Deets there, like you know he can land better long long range stuff, right? Um So what he needs to do to capitalize, and we're only gonna do one more of these, just so we're not like flooding this MMR with uh with me in it. Um yeah. is I lost my train of thought. 
He just needs to have confidence in terms takes him uh, taking the shots. That's really all it is. So when he goes yeah. back and you look through this VOD and you, and you look, those shots, you just have to take them. You just have to take the shots, even if you believe that you're going to miss them. Don't worry. Don't get anxious about what's in your inventory. You, you're Loba. You have infinite amounts of, amounts of ammo. Even if you have 30, take the shots as if you have unlimited ammo. And try to dish out as much damage as humanly possible. Um, you I know? feel like I need to slow down sometimes and just really pace the shots. Yeah. Well, even then, just, just shoot. Just go for it. You don't need yeah. to pace the shots and just miss when you need to miss, you know? Well, I'm in with, like, uh, I'd say, like, a wingman. Because when I have wingman, sometimes I just, like, never miss a hit. I never hit something. Just keep keep uh, shooting it, you know? Just just yeah. miss. Like Danny said, he, he was, but he was missing a lot of the end. It happens. People, you know, you whiff. Uh, going to land over there. You're going to land shots, and you're going to miss them. Speaking of uh, wingman, is that I noticed when in your session with the... The London guy, he, uh, you, when you had the wingman, you were like flicking into the, the shots. Is that something that's good to do? Um, I do it for visibility purposes and what I feel comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, that's usually. I think I do that as well. I thought I thought it was a bad habit to be honest. Um, it depends. It it depends. Cause while there's a rule for everything, there's a rule that breaks the rule depending on what feels comfortable for you. You know. If it feels comfortable, then you don't have anything to worry about. That's more than it works, right? Yeah. Like, I, like if I'm coaching somebody, I'm telling them what works, what feels comfortable for them and telling them, well, let's say you ran a high sense. You run, like, let's say, I don't know, 17 centimeters per, per 360. I was like, whoa, that's too high of a sense, but you're frying with it. I would never tell you to change it. There's no reason to change. If it works for you and you feel comfortable with it, don't change it. But if you tell me your hand aches, after two or three hours of using it, then you gotta switch. Like it's not, it's not maintainable, you know. Yeah. The Just, thing is, I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, whenever I'm aim training, um, at least when I first started, like the first week, my arm would start to like really, my like my shoulder would start to really hurt after like the session. I don't know if that's just because, uh, like, my muscles were not used to the. It's the probably motion. how you're sitting. Um, try to sit up more straight and have your arms more at a, at a, um, 90 degree. yeah, 90 degree angle. And if, if it still hurts after sitting up properly at a 90 degree angle, then perhaps your sense is either too low and you're rotating or moving your arm differently, but it has everything to do with how you're sitting. It, sh it yeah. shouldn't be an issue if you're sitting right. It really shouldn't. Unless you have some sort of other health condition going on. But again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you that like yeah. you do what's comfortable ergonomically. Actually, I'm gonna hold on to that might as well. I, I try to be conscious of my um my posture whenever I I notice I like, sit back up and and start to hone in whenever, whenever I need to. As you keep training and breaking things down, this is important for everyone in chat. What seems like it's impossible or undo or impossible to do, whether it's somebody's landing every single shot is cracked and insane. If you break everything down into a microscopic level, it starts to showcase like. That's doable. That's not as insane as I thought it was. Or I can do that. Yes, literally anybody can. Like if you see how towards the end zone of like landing every single shot with his wingman, it should be respected because he landed every shot because you put the work in. But you should also realize that that type of talent is achievable because that is mechanical. Mechanical can be taught faster than um, like game sense or making the decisions. Like it, that takes a lot more time to build. So. With any pro player, it, I always feel like it's it's a it's not a good stance to put on them and say, well they're just they're just gifted or they're just talented. Never downplay their hard work because they definitely put a lot of work to get to where they're at. Little bolt over here. Let's push that. We'll go fight over there. You're on console. It's the same premise in terms of grind, in terms of work ethic and practice that you put in. Take height. Oh, what are they? They're across the way on uh, this ping right here, probably in the low area. Yeah. I'll scan them out in a second. So you always want to prioritize taking height, right? Ideally, take height, take a better position. Hold on, I think they're underneath now. Oh. Nope. It's all the ult. Over here. Maybe they went more. 63. Cracked. 80 on the skid. If they're cracked, I'm pushing. They don't seem very when confident. Um, no nades. Oh, well, it works. Whatever you want to do. 
Pushing up, scanning. One over here. Hey, I'm going something. Scanning again for you. Guys, I see Yep. He's got gold. I'm in uh, 90. Okay, I'm gonna sell up. Got another skin going out. Fortune on the horizon. Selling. They're both cracked on the uh, Okay, moving up. Horizon. I'm gonna take height on the right. Not bad. Yeah, it seems like they isolate themselves. Yeah, they're grouping together now though. Here, I'm gonna scan in two seconds. They might push me if they think I'm isolated. No, they're good. Nice, good bind on that guy's part. The top off. <clears throat> One push out. Okay, nice. Still. 69. Oh push. Yeah, he's flush. 3v2 now. I'm gonna nade it. Yep, yep. I could not hit a shot, and I feel like see Oh, one push on the outside. Give you. Okay. He's pushing on teammate. Level. Where is him? Oh, I see. He's over here. Nice, good job, good cleanup. And there you go. These guys. Nice. A lot of people who play bronze and silvers are a lot better than you give them credit for. These guys are trying yeah. to win. Like they're they're not. It's not pubs. There's a different type of energy that people uh, give off. So if you're freaking out and nervous, I promise you that most likely they are as well. Like, you yeah. don't ever truly get rid of nerves. Like, you have to play it smart. You have to think things through. But, you know, it it does get easier. Yo, do you still use rock cell? Really. Yeah, I do. Uh, what do you think about gold shields? Gold shields, if you have a lot of batteries, go for red. If you don't have a lot of batteries, go for gold based on resources like let's say we're across the team right now we have 12 bats we don't need gold if only one of us has three bats and the rest have none uh one of us needs to take gold you know yeah so it depends on like what's in the area and what to use like there's two bats right here like we're doing okay like this isn't bad i mean we could go for it for it if we want but we don't need to you know it's just it's a resource play i don't even know what i want i need arcs I need this much here. Let's get at least one nade. We are taking a lot of time to loot, but it's, it's bronze, so I don't have to worry. I feel like you play better in ranked. It's because you're thinking, because there's something on the line. If there's pressure, then that makes a big difference. But treat no point, every like... fight, every encounter as if they were a good player, so then you're always making good decisions. It's hard to always do that, though. Sometimes if you're just on fire and you're just, you know, really feeling it, sometimes you just don't want to. But you have to remember to, if that makes sense. Yeah. I I guess that's why in trios I kind of just troll and just, like, go for hot drops and don't really care. I think I've, I play worse because of that. Yeah. I'm just, like, going in willy-nilly and not really trying, even though I think I am. I, I guess here, here's the thought process as we're queuing together practice or practice as if how you would actually play so yeah. if you're hot dropping there's nothing wrong with it because you're learning how to fight and it shows in your 1v1s that you have really strong 1v1s but still practice your movement and positioning as if you were trying to win or trying to play ranked you know yeah if you practice that way you will play that way you know okay. if you don't then you know it's not gonna we're not gonna work Joshua we're doing a yeah. coaching session I'm a uh, Queuing with Deets, and I'm just kind of coaching him and talking through decision making, and then I'm gonna hop on this off this account and not be on it anymore. So now this is where I'm kind of like, I mean, what's next? So you said move towards. We just the go zone. to zone. Okay. I guess this is more, more obvious than not. Yeah, it really is. Like you don't have to overthink it. Like okay, so when it starts to get quote unquote more complicated, if there's a team here, we rotate that way. You know, it's like if there is not a team there, then we push right through. It's like if there's a team there and we did 150 damage, let's shove right through them. You know, it's like the answer is most likely going to be right in front of your face. It's just everyone does tend to overthink the plays and fights, you know, like let's yeah. say we call around the corner here and the zone does close. Right. Let's say there's a team right here. 
just for a second, just for meme purposes. There's a team right there, and they're shooting at us. Well, we're not going to run up on them. No matter if they were garbage yeah. players or not, it doesn't matter. Let's say if it was Timmy, it doesn't matter who it is. You rotate. Bad position. Right? Then we go this way. You know, then we rotate over to the right. We use a wraith portal. I can use my scans to help find us a rotational positioning. We get shot. We heal up. We heal up. Take some shots while somebody's crossing. Take shots and get them to back up and keep rotating. Keep rotating, and then we end up in a better spot over here. Now, if there's two teams here, there's then this is why everyone runs Valkyrie. Let's say we rotate here and there's a team here. All right, well, screw this. Time to Valkult. Let's go yeah. to where we have clearance, probably right here. If the team lets us fly, then we can fly over, and then we'll rotate all the way through staging, you know? Mm. You, you take the decisions based on what is thrown at you, and there's not a bad decision, because this isn't a bad decision to rotate here. It could mean better positioning in the long run. You could go the other side and get gated. You don't really know until you actually just do it. So don't let teammates get you down and say, that was a dumb push. It was like, well, it's only yeah. a dumb push if, did you have any damage? Well, then no, then it was a dumb push. If you all did it together and you had damage, then it no longer was an unintelligent push. Like, then you, you did what you need to do. Let's say if zone was closing, you had no choice. Sometimes you just have to full send it and say, all right, guys, there's no other options. It's time to just pray. There's nothing else we can do. Yeah. And that's all, that's all you can do. You're just going to have to full send it and pray. So what I'm grab or grasping is that you usually want to look for fights, um, and you always want to be kind of moving. It's on the move all the time. Essentially, if you're standing still, then you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially in this game. Yeah. That's why it's such an interesting. There's two teams up here. It's such an interesting game to uh to play to watch is just because it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna scan just to check. They're further. Yeah, I absolutely out. love this game. I'm ulting. Okay. One on the left here. A horrible air with. Cracked. Flush, scanning. Nice, good job. So it was a solo. It was another team, unless the other guys are down below. I'm gonna scan just to see. Wait, so was he the one shooting? He was, but I don't know at who. <laughs> yeah, they're they're in here. Let's see if I can arc one. Oh, they're all in there? Yeah, yeah, they're in there. Yeah. The arc missed. Oh, arc still in the top thing. I'll scan. Oh, they're on roof now. Nice. Ooh, one's pushed out. Yeah, nice. Moving up. I think he did a little damage, so I'm going to rotate on the backside. Try to get some damage in. One's on the bottom. They have reds. 46 on Ash. Ooh. I'm batting, I just got hit. Okay, you're good. Almost cracked Ash. Oh, I got, I'm, uh, he's ulted. Okay. I'm watching your cross. You should be good. They're not gonna be able to push up. Scanning for you. He's oh, trying to move up, isolated? but he's, yeah, but he's, but he's isolated. Oh my god, he's laggy. He's like from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if he, um. Okay, careful on dropping down. This guy's right here. We might be able to just full send them together. Let's go in that building. I'm pushing inside. I'm pushing inside. I'm pushing inside. Okay. Oh my god, he's so laggy. Batting? He's out. Yep, reset, reset. Alright, now we get a 3v2. Scanning. Oh, oh nice. I just cracked the, uh, what's the wall? Okay, yep, yeah. behind this over here. I'm pushing. I oh, shit, hello. Alright, I'm gonna sell up. I think there's oh, a guy over on the left. Mind. Yeah. Alright, if they push, that's ideal. They might be running. Yeah, yeah, they pushed. Watch out, Nade. I got scanned in two seconds. All right, they're up top now. They got height. Uh, I think the guy's on the right. I'm gonna leave building so we're not all in here. Batting. Sure. It's a three v two, so if we get a crack, we just full send it. I'm bad. Okay, hey, you're good. One's up top. I'm to try to nade him so I can, can push it. Okay, I'm moving up. He can definitely push back. So there's one on the left. Push, push this right? guy. Push the guy up right. We got him. It's a 2v1. Alright, reset. Oh, I'm hit. I'm hit hard. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your cross in a second. Hold on. You're good. You're good. I dropped. 
All right, that guy's cracked. I'm pushing him. What the heck? Where should, where'd he go? Oh, I think he ran. He ran this way. If he ran, that's fine. All right, so chat. So what you're seeing there is literally making engagement based on uh, isolating people out in fights. It, it, like, honestly, those guys can probably beat us in 1v1s potentially. It's not like they got bad shots at all. It's just catching them out and then capitalizing on their mistakes. That's pretty much it. And if you're solo queuing the same premise, if you see them do a lot of damage, then you just pretty much go on it and make a play. Otherwise, you just pretty much hold and wait. Because once they're, they're cracked, they probably can't anything when they yeah. move. Or even if that guy's over there, yeah, we're at the disadvantage because we're on low ground. We're going to have to pretty much, like, I guess what's the lack for a better word, isolate the fight or, like, just ego challenge. But if it's a 2v1, we know we're going to get it. All right, these guys dropped right here. You just respawn? Yeah. I'm going to scan. Hold on. If they're over there in shambles, then. Uh, we'll scan. Hear them underneath. Malting? Yeah. There's also one over here. Let's go for this kid. Okay. Pushing with me? Yep. Oh, there's two in there. Okay, nice. I'm gonna thermite him. Yeah. Crap, there's three the backing up, backing up. Oh, there's three, there's three. Yeah, back up, back up. I'm selling. Yeah, you're good. Oh, very oh, nice. What? What was that, a Graber? Yeah. If you need to back up, back up. You might be able to res. Hopefully our other guy can cover. Where's our... Uh, oh, okay. Shoot. Stop rezzing, stop rezzing. You're going to fight. Run, run, run. Oh, I hit him as I drop. Oh. Oh, God, this is really bad. Oh, I got that off. Oh. That's all good. All right, so that could th th there's nothing wrong with that push. We we still we still did really well with it, and you look how much points we went up to. So the only yeah. thing we could have done different, like they had a, we learned that they had a craver uh, midway through yeah. when we're fighting. Um, oh, I didn't I didn't need to contest it. I definitely was kind of ego challenging it. Our Ash was a bit behind, so that's also kind of the downside there. We could have yeah. we could have clutched up, but we made a play. We made an attempt. You know, there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. making an attempt and making a push. Especially whenever you're learning and just trying to trying to fight, so there's nothing so what, wrong with what necessarily we did there. The only thing we could have improved upon is all being together, capitalizing yeah. faster on the res because I think they got the res and wow, this guy's got ten kills. So we talk about people smurfing twenty bomb four k. Yeah. Oh yeah. It it just happens in the seminar. It's gonna happen. Yeah. But hopefully that's a that's helpful. It's not every guy though, so it's, that's why. No, we, it's like you—you you have to feel out like, are we going to be able to fight this? Realistically, when I said we back up, we should have backed up um, ten seconds sooner and just backed up to mm -hmm. the ash. We should have been aware that yeah. the ash was isolated. But you know, yeah. it's one of those things. Like if we're playing bronze, you think you could just pretty much push everything and win, and that's not always right. the case, right? Yeah. As soon as I realized that um, our ash was like so far behind, now just it's like it's not good. When, especially after you got Craven. Yeah, it's okay. And honestly, it's better just to leave me. That's another tip mm -hmm. I can provide. If I make a mistake, this is such a good teaching moment also for chat. If your teammate makes a mistake, no matter how good they are, even if it was Timmy or if it's me, if I make a mistake, you leave me. There's no mm -hmm. reason to throw your game just because what? I made a fatal mistake. You know what I mean? You saw like Kraber shot? Yeah, I mean, it was a good Kraber shot. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah so the reason I stuck it is because I thought the Ash would cover me, but you know. Just... Yeah, it was too far away. But always just play for you. 100% because let's say you got distance and you reset with the uh, with the ash and then the yeah. other team shows up because they heard the fight then they third party and then you capitalize on it wow you know that's really what you do it, it can be a good thing maybe it's a good thing I got eliminated so then the other team comes out of the woodwork and says oh my gosh they were fighting let's uh let's uh let's engage okay. on it now and when they show yeah. up they realize okay they made their presence known um, now they can uh, they can fight on this you know right yeah yeah okay so everybody is watching. That's a, that's a great teaching moment for pretty much everybody in terms of, uh, you know, it's like just because your teammate makes a mistake doesn't mean you have to throw your game as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, you winked out. Yeah, yeah. And look at you. You're already like halfway through silver too. 
And you know what? I was actually, the last time I was playing ranked, I was struggling to get like a decent game and I was just like going up by small points. I just, I was trying to get tilted too. And it's okay. You're going to have those rounds. Like you're going yeah. positive. It's just a matter of time. Like we have good rounds. We have bad rounds. Like we happen to play mm -hmm. decently in both those rounds. It Could we have done better? Sure. It, like it doesn't matter, but you go again and you try again. I'm actually, yeah. uh, somebody said another with them. Should that be our last one? Cause it's almost, uh, it's 317. Let's see what time is it's it. It's up to you. I want to clog it if someone wants to get in. All right, because chat wants to. Uh, let's do one more. We're going to do one more okay. with them because that's what chat wants to do. Uh, I don't think I'll have time to add in a whole nother coaching such session just because I want you guys to... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I want to invest into you guys and like actually spend time. Um, yeah. Because if I bring somebody, I'm gonna, I'll literally only get like 20 minutes with them, you know, or like 30 minutes, and I don't mm -hmm. feel like that's necessarily fair. I, I want you guys to feel like I'm really invested. If you guys like this, leave a like because we can do more of this and like more coaching and more hands on. I just had this idea overnight where I'm like, because I, I have like EA sponsored videos, but I'm like, let's turn it into this. And I think it'll be because the whole purpose of me making these videos are to help you guys. And why EA actually sponsored my content to begin with is because I was already doing this content. I don't have to change anything. I don't need to change who I am. I don't have to change how I do content. I'm just doing the same thing. I would normally do and that's it's such it's so easy you know it's organic and it's fun i see those streamers playing poorly positional but they aim so well it doesn't make a difference because it kills everybody so fast well the interesting part about that and why i'm gonna, I'm gonna play horizon this run yeah i'll play horizon um why it works is because again like we mentioned how there's a rule a rule can be broken for everything you do if you have bad positioning, but you land three headshots in a row and the person up top is knocked, well then if you're Horizon, you can queue up and capitalize on that that damage, right? Putting pressure and doing damage creates openings and creates positioning that otherwise would not have existed. So it's just a matter of you making sure that you find, has someone paid for coaching? No, we're doing, we're literally giving it away to the community for free. Um, Essentially. Oh, by the way, thank you for this. I, I really appreciate it. it yeah, no worries, lot, dude. Honestly. I got to meet uh, Jordy and I got to meet uh, here uh, London Aid. So two great peeps. Again, we're just doing it randomly. Whoever wants to just hop in. I just had this idea because you guys wanted more coaching and I don't like putting a price tag to coaching. And hey, this way it's literally a video for you guys to reference to, to learn. You know, nobody ever plays perfect every single game. And it's something to really understand. My guns are yeah. two P twenty twenties. That's not good. All right. Well, I mean, I'll fight anyways. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, I'm on here. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm on my way. I got down. Uh, this is a revenue. I gotta use a phoenix. Oh shoot. Using a phoenix, and I'll come back in with my P twenty twenty. It's actually good whenever you hit your shots with it. True. It's like a new gas. He's pushing. There's an L stun. Oh. Weapon on me. Just need Octane to run up now. There's another guy outside. One person. P2020, let's, let's go. go. Oh my god, they were kitted. Let's go. Alright. P20 is insane. You know, honestly, don't give up whenever you're dropping whatever you got because you can still clutch it out. You never know. Yeah. Honestly, the best advice I can give anybody, like, even if you land on a Mozambique, you're like, I'm not going to win this. You might. Honestly, you never know. Doesn't mean, like, just the RNG of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Drop off here. Is there a trick to the Mozambique? Because, like, I feel like I was hitting my shots when I first picked it up, but now it just, like, shots are invisible or something. The Mozambique just has a really low bullet velocity. That's all. Oh. Uh. So be sure to leave a like, guys, because after this, I'm going to be heading out for the the day. 
but again, if you like stuff like this, let me know. Um, I'm sure EA is going to check out this video because it's, it is a sponsored piece. Uh, I didn't change anything of how I produce content. Like even it, I, I would do this if you guys like it as just a normal video, to be honest, like a normal stream. I'll, I'll do this every week if you guys dig it that much. But if you guys don't, then I mean, hey, well, I, I can always just do coaching privately. But I think you guys overall have really liked it. So that's that's a huge dub, you know. And there's so many things I can work on. I mean, I, I hit masters, but I can I can give you a list of things that I always want to continue to improve upon. Actually, I'm gonna take that boat check. I'm gonna run R301 and boat check. What are some things you feel like improve upon? Um, the things that I want to improve upon are a lot of my micro precision shots, especially when it comes to the wingman. I want to always be able to put out consistent pressure. I thrive when it comes to mid range to long range. But I want to be able to put really good pressure and not take immense amounts of damage and trade out yeah. damage. Let's say like I, I win my one, but then I'm like 50 HP. That's not good because now I'm 50 HP and I have to reset. So I want to oh, be able to to be able to reset and have really good movement to get in and out of rough spots. Right. So you want to be able to get those shots in quick and then able to retreat. Retreat, reposition. But it's a, it's a lot of constant decision making there, and it, it requires an even better movement that I pretty pretty much have. So that's what I've been working on uh, recently, and of course not being dumb with my decision making, but that's always an ongoing one. Yeah. I know movement or aim, which is more important, positioning, over both. You can move like an absolute god and be really really talented, but if your positioning is garbage, it really doesn't matter. You can land every single shot, but if you're sitting there wide swinging right in the open, you won't, and you cannot learn to not do that. Let's say I'm standing right here and I land every single shot. I'm like, I hit the guy for 150, and I'm flush and cracked right here, and I go down. It doesn't matter how much damage I did because I pretty much threw for the team and I gave it to the other guys. Even if there was two people shooting at me and I traded a bunch of damage, I can't push on it. That's, so that's what I'm saying I want to work on. I want to be able to trade out positive damage and have the damage be effective. Because if it's not effective and you can't push on it, then the damage probably wasn't really good to begin with, you know? It's that next level thinking in terms of thinking an opponent. <laughs> right, Irvin? It's like live demos for drawings. True. It's true. Oh, it's it's a Josh fee. Let's go. It's so good. Give us more, Dad. I'm your dad. <laughs> Uh, you should definitely follow uh, Josh Feige's channel. He posts a lot of single-player content. He's really into um, multiplayer content as well. Like, he play a lot of Battlefield. But you definitely got to join up on his channel and give him a sub. He plays indie titles, main titles. And sometimes, you know, I was talking, you know, with Jordy here. A good way to relieve a lot of stress when you're having a bad day on Apex. Sometimes you just have bad days. And if you just can't separate the bad days from the good days, just go play a different game for a little while. And then come right back. Do I have a dead eyes? Oh, you know, screw it. I'm grabbing a wingman. Can't pass up a wingman. Literally, I, I now I will never pass off uh, a wingman. Silver four. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a coaching session, Oliver. We're doing coaching. I've already hit masters. I, I've been helping Deets and Deets. The goal of why I'm I'm doing this for Deets is Deets is insane. If you go back to his earlier um his earlier stuff uh in the, in this stream, which is going to become a video. If you go back earlier, you will see how insane his aim is, but he needs to build confidence when it comes to just going and ranked. And you'll notice his damage output wasn't as high, but that's because he needs to take shots. You just got to be more confident. So I logged into this account just temporarily, just for educational purposes, just to play with him because I can't play with him on the main account because I, I want to show him based on rotation what he's doing that he can do this. And then I'll pretty much never log in this account ever again. It'll go all the way back down to bronze. Hey, look at that, they're right there. We're in zone so we can gate them out. Okay, yeah, I was about to get on that building, but it's not in zone. Yeah, wait for them to leave or go over on the left. I'm not really sure which one they're going to do first. Oh, they're right here. Oh, yeah, they're pushing. 70 on one. Uh, crack the purple. Okay. I don't know who it was.
I'm rotating up to you guys. See if I can create an opening. Oh my god, I was tracking right behind him. I'm crying. Give me flush. Was flush. I'm pushing over into the building. Oh, uh, shh. Give me sound. I'm gonna throw a grenade in there. Knock the seal. Nice, good job. Bloodhound is flush. Pushing. Let me just bat before I die. Where's the blood on? Oh, you ran. Okay. How do you make the reticle so saturated? Um, I have it in the command line. This guy's literally. That's actually what I was wondering as well, because I, I noticed yours is like glowing. Yeah, you put in the command line in it uh, before you load into Origin or Steam, any platform. Yeah. Do you have a certain uh, thing for it? Yeah, it's in my video. I'll do a short on it as well to share it. It's a lame saying. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It's not even a lame saying. It's so true, dude. Oh, there's our next fight. Let's go fight that. We gotta go to zone anyways. I need light. I'll be fine, though. Hey, I'm kind of getting the rhythm now. Yeah, I, it, and it changes. The rhythm is going to adjust as you get higher ranked, but it's like fight, loot, go to zone, and like that you know that we were in zone earlier but now we're not so yeah. you know we go in and if you're already sitting in zone well i mean sometimes you just have to you know afk and do nothing and if you want rp then give up your positioning but know that there's a consequence if somebody takes it you know they're underneath let's uh be dumb and we can push underneath the tunnel i'm confident we can shove them with pressure they already scanned me. 112 on him. This guy's gonna run. Definitely want that light ammo. I think, I think they're inside on the right, actually. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, they're in here. Alright, I'm gonna push him, shoving. That was a dumb push on my part. I didn't know there were all three in here. I thought it was oh. one. My bad. <laughs> no, I, I knew there was a second one, but I tried to cover your back as well. Nah, it's okay. Nah. I literally thought it was one in there. I was just being dumb. <laughs> there's three? Yeah, there's, oh, they're all oh, three God. in there camping. Okay. I had no idea there's three. <laughs> That's all good. We still got points, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they are the all three camping there. in the back. That's crazy. Oh. And there was a third part that came here, too. Like, I went around the corner. Even if there was two there, like, we had it. We were going to win. But I wasn't expecting the fact that all three of them were camping inside of that thing. That's insane, dude. That's crazy. That is a very strange play. I don't think I've, I've seen anybody go in there very and camp strange. like that in a long time. But, I, I mean, hey, it happens. It happens. All right, man. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. But all right. hopefully this was helpful. Awesome. You're going to run into stuff like that. And sometimes, again, if you make a play and you go for it, Hey, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it it doesn't really you'll know matter. For next time. You'll know for next time. Like, okay, if yeah. people are going to be weird and camp in there. Honestly, he was playing like he was by himself. Like, that was so yeah. strange. Like, if that was Diamond, there's... No, bro, I, I, I swear, if I ever see a Diamond Plus player camping in that building like that, I'm, I would literally cry. I would, I would, I would be like, why are they in there? There was no it's Cossack the barrels. There was no Cossack barrels. There was no Watson yeah. fences. There was nothing. They were sitting behind a door, and it's very, very strange. But like they I said, throw you off. remember I had the saying, "It doesn't." It, there's no such thing as a bad decision because hey, it did. Uh -huh. it, they did win, right? They, yeah. they did clutch it out. Like that could like uh, you, you've seen streamers say this all the time like if you see you probably watch your favorite streamers like what were they doing there what, what, what's wrong with those people yeah. they're such garbage players who plays like that bro it, it's a battle royale you never know what anybody's gonna do man yeah you know and it, like it just kind of happens <laughs> I, i'm honestly i i i don't know what i was gonna say sorry no you're good i thought but, you were um, gonna throw your ult bro i thought there was one if i threw my ult like i didn't have any nades so i wide swung them and i was just literally gonna destroy them one person said, I saw the guy, yeah, and I wide swung. I was like, bro, this is easy. I'm just going to literally one mag him. Then I got blasted right in the back, you know? Oh, that's crazy. All right. Um, um, hey, don't be sad. Uh, this is just how it works out sometimes. <laughs> oh, God. God. PTSD. <laughs> Battlefield 2042 PTSD. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciate this. You've helped me more than you probably can believe. Go uh, have fun in there, man. Know. Just it's... treat ranked as if it was F if it was pubs. And like oh, even yeah. if you lose RP, it doesn't matter. Like we just went up RP. We did we could have we gotten placement? Yes. Does it matter? No. Like let's just go no. go in there and have a good time. Don't just let anybody playing. don't let anybody ruin your, your, your time that you have, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, bro. Well, I appreciate I just, you so much. Thank you so much yeah. for uh, at least being live and being open to letting people, uh, you know, see. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it puts yourself in a place of vulnerability being live and being coached live, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, it I'm going to go practice, like you said. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some 1v1s in and really hone in on those uh, close quarters engagements because that's where I really lose it. Keep calm. Listen to music and vibe out, you yeah. know? Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to music when I play ranked. I'll try to and and, it. and don't get frustrated. Yeah. Remember that you can have moments where you push in like that and land a majority of your shots and still lose. And it's okay. Yeah. It's okay if that happens because it just means, okay, I'm not going to do that next time. I'm going to play patiently. Or yeah. if it works, hey, it works. You know, right. I, I call those those decisions and I, whenever I'm playing with uh, Sarah Mari, whoever. I'm like, I'm about to do something dumb. You do something dumb because you, yeah. you, the outcome, if it works, is going to be really cool. If it doesn't, yeah. you're about to look real dumb. You know? Like, I say that <laughs> so many times. And then Sarah, like, has, has can attest to it. I know she's in chat. And I guarantee chat can attest to it, too. Or I'm like, I, I will say, I'm like, okay, I'm about to do something dumb. The dumb. Doing something dumb will either be the best play in the world or it's about to be the dumbest play in the world. But at least I know <laughs> for next time, you know? Yeah. I'll make you look smart, if anything. Exactly. It works out. Hey, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, bro. Uh, thank you. Thank you again once again. No worries, bro. Go kill it. Uh, again, don't forget to leave a like on the stream, everybody. I'll see you guys next time. All right. All right, everybody. Uh, good stream. Good vibes. Hopefully, you guys all had a good time. Hopefully, it was educational for a lot of people just to to see. I mean, again, you have good rounds. You have bad rounds. I mean, you have moments where you land your shots. You have moments where you don't land your shots. You know, I, I literally woke up in stream and kind of just went right into this, you know? But um, I would, I'd love to do more stuff like this if this is what you guys really, really enjoy doing. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next stream. Bye, everybody.